Dr. M. P. Singh Ji, esteemed participants who joined us virtually from across the country, and my colleagues from uh, IWST. Very good morning to all of you once again. Uh, IWST is hosting uh, this webinar on uh, sandalwood uh, farming and uh, management of its health. Uh, as many of you may be aware that uh, Institute of Wood Science Technology is a center of excellence for sandalwood research. In the past, uh, from last March, uh, we have organized more than uh, 20 training programs and workshops under Ajadika Amrut Mosso Initiative of Government of India to commemorate and celebrate 75 years of independence. Uh, on sandalwood, to be precise, on sandalwood, this is the sixth training we are conducting on sandalwood, not only for cultivation, even value addition, and even trading as well. Uh, so today we are happy to host uh, once again uh, the training program on uh, sandalwood farming and uh, management of uh, its health. Uh, uh, in fact, we did the same training in uh, Tamil, Hindi, Kannada, and English. Today also I kept it in English. Uh, so, with this background, now we would request uh, course coordinator uh, Dr. Sundarajan to welcome the participants and guests. Thank you, Mr. Sukumarji. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, it is my pleasure to formally welcome um, all. At the outset, I welcome our director, um, Dr. M.B. Singh, because under his pursuance and uh, follow up only, uh, this program is organized. And he is the he only initiated even at this March busy arts schedule of other activities. He directs us to uh, conduct this program. So uh, at the outset, I welcome you, sir. Um, then I welcome all the participants, distinguished participants who are connected um, online from different parts of the country, and there are maybe some more participants who join uh, who has taken the motto or initiate of. Uh, uh, growing sandalwood and not only growing sandalwood in a healthy and a productive way and welcome uh, each one of you who joined by uh, joined in uh, offline sorry online and i also welcome um, asian snow officer dr shivkumar for, for coordinating this program and um, also he organized this program today i my sincere welcome to all the uh, resource persons uh, dr n Revi, I think Dr. Durai, Dr. Um, Devakara for this program and all my divisional staff who are with me to assist in all this program, I welcome you all. I welcome once and, once and all again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sundarajanji. Now I would request uh, our director, Dr. M.P. Singh for the inaugural uh, remarks. Over to you, sir. Yeah, very good morning to all. It is we are organizing this series of webinars on sandalwood. We started this webinar in the COVID period, and this is a blessing that we will continue this kind of webinar so that you can join and you can interact with the scientists at IWST from your own place of convenience. And we hope to continue this uh, series, online series. Though we have hosted all the lecture, most of the lectures uh, we are hosting on the YouTube also. But our endeavor is to make, to give, impart so much, as much knowledge as possible to meet your all the queries and interact to uh, in, have a very good interaction with our scientists so that you feel confident of, of undertaking cultivation of sandalwood in your, in your land. So this is the whole motto. In fact, we will be having the offline training next month. But uh, uh, then also, when we have the offline training, then also we'll continue with the online mode so that the uh, and the farmers or the or the other people who are not able to join offline, they can interact and their queries can be answered by our scientists from uh, the remotest place in the country. I know it is a very challenging thing in India to 
adopt the language. Farmers are good at their own language. We understand that. Uh, but uh, we have some limitations of our scientists. Uh, they are well versed with the English and uh, they find it very difficult. But we promise to have in different languages. Also. Uh, in fact, uh, when we will have uh, this webinar, we will alternatively have in other languages also, like Kannada, Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu, Hindi also. So we, we hope that we will continue this in different language also. So it is uh, this we is, is the last webinar of this financial year, and it was scheduled to be held in the month of February. But due to our own engagement at the institute with uh, uh, two, three offline training being conducted, we could not uh, host it uh, in, in the month of February. So we are having it now. But we, I hope that you interact with the scientists, with the scientific queries, queries, and then, and then you can, you uh, can. Uh, you can have your answers from them and you feel confident of undertaking cultivation of sandalwood. That is our endeavor, that is our uh, luck, that is our objective that more and more farmers undertake this cultivation of sandalwood. And when we, if you feel that you need to have the offline training, you can join next month so that. Dr. Sundaraj will, will, will announce uh, that which date you can join so that you have the better hands-on training also. So with this, I wish all the best to all the participants and the scientists here to uh, undertake this training in the virtual mode. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, encouraging words. Uh, thank you one and all once again for this inaugural joining us for uh, inaugural session. Now we will start our uh, technical session without any delay. To conduct the technical session, I will I would like to hand over the mic to Miss Nalini. Over to you, no, Nalini. Thank you, sir. Uh, like as we all know, the fragrance of the sandalwood does not travel far. But the fragrance of its virtue rises to heavens. Uh, India was contributing 85% of the world's trade of sandalwood, but unfortunately it has been reduced to a negligible level in the recent years. It is downhearted to know that sandalwood tree is in the vulnerable list of tree species in the IUCN. This resulted in the changes in the policy of sandalwood cultivation in state and central government. Consequently, forming of sandalwood is gaining momentum. Today, this webinar is arranged for the online training on sandalwood farming and management of its health to grow sandalwood in a more healthy and sustainable way. We have panel of experts to share their knowledge and assist you to cultivate sandalwood successfully. So our first session will be on sandalwood seed handling and nursery techniques by our Dr. N. Ravisar, Scientist T, IWST. Over to you. Very good morning to all, respected director, uh, respected uh, uh, course coordinator, Dr. Sundarajan sir, and uh, extension officer sir. Uh, very good morning to all. I'll be uh, talking on nursery technology of sandalwood. Cost of cultivation, I will not be talking about that. Uh, other gentlemen will be covering it up. So, uh, so this is the sandal habitat. Uh, sandal is a hemi root parasite. And there are over 3,000 species of uh, parasites are uh, growing along with uh, sandal. 
the hardwood formation starts from 7 to 10 years and the value of uh, hardwood is uh, due to its oil content which varies from uh, 5 to 7 percent in some cases it is 3 percent also the oil content is highest in the uh, root this is a, a small glimpse of uh, natural seed production area of uh, sandalwood in kerala from there, uh, the quality seeds are collected. So, uh, the any for any good quality seed, uh, <clears throat> food collection plays the important role. You have to collect the fruits, which is fully matured. The sandal fruit, when it gets matured, it turns up from green in color to reddish in color and the matured one turns into purple blue once the fruits are collected the fruits are uh, soaked in water for one or two hours sometimes three hours if the fruits are slightly dried you can soak it for a little more hours then later on the fruits are uh, taken out and rubbed with a uh, hand to remove the skin later on the skin and the pulp gets separated and we get the seeds separately so the rubbing has to be done on a little a rough surface so once the collected fruits are clean and the seeds are separated from the fruit they have to be dried the moisture should be made to get evaporated partially shade partial sunlight you can spread the seeds and you can uh, dry it generally it gets dried off within a day so for quality seeds the seeds should be collected from a good uh, genotype in our case we are collecting it from a good plantation which are good trees we grade the trees based on their performance and later on seeds are collected from the selected trees and they are all bulked the season for sowing the seeds is generally starts from december and it is followed and it is taken for transplanting only during the month of january and transplanting can be extended to february why we are preferring december is most of the seeds you will get during september october and during december the winter will come down so that that will be an ideal season for germination of the seeds The seeds are put in the germination bed. Generally, the dimension of the germination bed is one meter into ten meter, and the sand area occupies zero point one five meter, roughly half feet. So, point seven five cubic meter of sand is required for one bed, and the border is made with bricks. You require three hundred number of bricks, and 500 gram of forage is used to avoid the insects and gibberellic acid is required for soaking the seeds in one bed you can sow 10 kilogram of sandal seeds this is the preparation of the germination bed we will be seeing the, uh, the length is 1 into 10 by meter and the border is made uh, bricks to avoid uh, leaching of sand bed. So, as I mentioned earlier, four to ten gram granules is used in the bed. The western is used after germination of the seedlings when you find the fungal infection. For germination of seeds, seeds has a, uh, its own inherent uh, ability for germination. But to obtain uniform germination, 
we have to break the dormancy. The chemical which is used here for breaking the dormancy is uh, gibberlic acid. 500 ppm of gibberlic acid, technically speaking. In other words, take one gram of gibberlic acid and dissolve it in two liters of water. That constitution becomes 500 ppm of gibberlic acid and it has to be soaked for 8 to 12 hours. Generally, if you soak the seeds in the evening in the gibberlic acid solution somewhere around 5 or 6 o'clock, next day morning you can start sowing your seeds. The soaked seeds are spread on the sand bed. You should take care that the seeds are not clumping in one place. It should be spread uniformly. Approximately 400 seeds per one square meter is an ideal spread of the seeds in the nursery bed. Once the seeds are spread, they have to be covered with a thin layer of sand. So watering has to be done with a flower pot in a very uh, gentle manner. If the area is slightly hotter, if you want moisture to be retained, you can use the straws above that to retain the moisture. Where the temperature is little low, and if you want to increase the temperature inside the nursery bed, you can use a polythene tunnel completely covered with that after the watering. There will be an increase in temperature and humidity. After, trans after germination, we have to transplant the material into the polythene bag for which we use the mixture of uh, compost, sand and soil. We call it as potting media. The ratio of compost to sand and soil is 50 is to 35 is to 50. And 2 is to 1 is to 1 sand, soil, FIM. Alternatively, you can use this also as a potting media. Compost, sand, and soil are generally used in uh, root trainers, and where sand, soil, and FIM are used in polythene bag, along, along with uh, 10 kg of neem cake per metric cube of the mixture and 4.5 kilogram of single superphosphate as nutritional enrichment in the polythene bag. Fungicide and forate are mixed in the soil mixture as a protectant. We can avoid it also if it is not required, but using for it will avoid the infection of the pest and uh, nematodes. This is how the soil mixture is prepared with sand, soil, compost, and charcoal is optional. So once all these samples are mixed uniformly, they will be used for transplanting into the root trainers and polythene bags. In root trainers, we use the compost, soil, and sand mixture. The seeds which are sowed on the nursery bed germinating after 21 days. You will be seeing here the seeds which are just coming out of the sand bed. These are all seedlings germinated after 30, 35 days. They start germinating after 21 days. These are all 14 days old seedling after germination. This is a close look of those uh, germinated seedlings. Once the seedlings become three to four leaf stage, they are ready for transplanting. One has to observe the seedlings and start removing the three to four leaf stage, stage seedlings and transplant them to the root trainers. You can see how the seedling is removed from the sand bed. You have to use a small stick and gently push from the bottom. Since it is sand, the seedling will come smoothly. 
one of the advantage of using sand is while removing the ceilings, no root, no damage will happen to the root trainer roots, particularly for the fibrous roots. As I mentioned, two to four leaf stage is the ideal stage. 30 to 40 days after sowing. Transplanting in the is generally done in the evening because the temperature will be low during the evening hours. After transplanting, will not have the ceilings will not have temperature shock. These ceilings are kept in shade for five to six days. Post plants are added after one week of transplanting. To avoid fungicide infection, a gentle dip in 0.5% bavastin. 0.1% is more than sufficient. So but we also gentle dip is enough. Here it is mentioned as five minutes, but a gentle dip with the bavastin is more than sufficient. The ceilings are transplanted into the root trainer by making a small pit in the center of the root trainer or polythene bag, and the ceilings are inserted into that, and they are closed. The handling should be very gentle. While doing it, there should not be any damage to the root portion or ceiling. The handling should be very gentle. Otherwise, you will find the casualty after transplanting. Watering has to be done with the plants and the transplanted ceilings will be kept in shade for two weeks. These are, these are all transplanted ceilings. Generally, uh, the host which is used is touch me not. Botanical name is my Mimosopotica. And a red gram. Vardal, Kajanas Gajan. Kajanas Gajan seeds are so near the seedling after a week they start germinating. They will serve as a host to the sandal plants which are in the where you will find the Kajanas Gajan germinating in the root trainer. These are all the seedlings raised in the root trainer. The advantage of root trainer is you can have more seedlings in a one square meter area, whereas polythene bag will lot of occupy the lot of area. And having it in root trainer, the roots will not overgrow. The length of the roots will be retained within the root trainer. And there will be good aeration. Only thing, this is little cost wise, it is little more than what you use in polythene bags. These are all the ceilings transplanted in the polythene bags. Root trainer, it is very easy for transplanting. You can transplant the ceilings very easily. In case of polythene bags, we use four by four size polythene bag. By mistake, it is mentioned as four feet. It is not four feet. It is four inch into six inch polythene bag. Sometimes eight by four polythene bag also you can use. In eight by four polythene bag, you can retain the ceilings in the polythene bag for about nine to ten months. Even a year also you can retain it. By the time the ceiling will attain a height of one to one and a half feet. This is the picture showing how the ceilings in the root train are removed. And while planting, how are you cutting the polythene bag and uh, transplanting the ceilings? You'll be, you'll be seeing it here, how they are removing it. A, a gentle tab at the bottom of the root trainer will help you to remove the sandal ceiling with the potting media which is coming out as a cake whereas in polythene cover what you will be doing is in the pit you will be taking the plant and cutting the cutting open the 
polythene cover and plant the swellings. At any cost, polythene bags should not be allowed in the petty to remove the polythene bag. So this is uh, what I have mentioned, how it is being transferred. These are uh, people who are a team working in the field. So these are all the seedlings which are ready for planting. Here you will be finding the Mimosa podica, that is a touch me not seedling as a host. These are all the seedlings with Pardal, Kajanas, Kajan. When the Kajanas, Kajan grows faster than sandal seedlings, one has to take care that the Kajanas, Kajan will not overgrow and dominate the sandal seedlings. You have to trim the Kajanas, Kajan seedlings. Keep trimming it so that it will not overgrow the sandal seedlings. Yes. Otherwise, it will suppress the growth of the sandal seedlings. So, this is the plants ready for planting in the nursery. So, these are all the seedlings ready for transporting. So, uh, planted seedling in the field after two and a half years. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. N. Ravi. I think we can have an interactive session last. I think you will be available, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, dear participants, uh, one option is we can have the all doubts, interactions in the, la uh, in the last because there is a, uh, time is allotted for that purpose. Uh, so that will be fine. Then, uh, where is our um, right historian? Next presentation is by uh, Dr. Durai. Uh, he will be talking on the uh, agroforestry models, sub sandalwood. Uh, he will take two minutes. Good morning to all. Okay. Am I audible? Dear participant. Hello. Good morning. Is the slide is visible to all? Please respond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Yes. So now the first part is over. It is an important part that nursery and quality ceiling production. Then the after nursery, it goes to the field. So now we see how the field, the plantation will be established, how it will be managed. So this part I am going to tell you. So 
this agroforestry scope of agroforestry you know that why we were more emphasized and government of india also they are pushing to promote the agroforestry in large scale because that most of the farmer in india it is there a small old farmer and uh, most of the cultivated land is rain fed is not irrigated land and another most important uh, interesting fact is more than 65 percent of the timber we are getting from the agroforest system so that is why the government of india and all would be interested they are dependent on the agroforestry systems in this context how that agro uh, sandalwood farming will be related so we'll just see then the scope of uh, scope for expansion of sandalwood cultivation in india what are the factor response for uh, this for the sandalwood prospect or the future in the, in the natural forest almost sandal is nil you cannot get any single tree viable single tree from the natural forest and another thing is many forest uh, many government they change their policy and they have the uh, scheme for promotion of sandal cultivation and there is a huge demand in the, our indian sandalwood in the international market and there is a assured income to the farmer there is a chance unlike other agriculture there is a chance for uh, income and uh, there is an intermediate income also we can get from the sandal based agroforest system and further while adding us it is a uh, semi parasite sandal so there is a need to adopt other species other uh, plants as a host so in that way we will enhance the agro biodiversity of the farmlands and it is easy to cultivate and it can be easily adaptable it can be wide uh, except water locking condition and saline condition it can be cultivate in any area and so in this way we can the sandal cultivation with agroforestry it will promote or it will secure the food wood and health of the system it is moving so manoeuvre it's very slow and some other uh, special features of sandal as you know that this is a parasite more than 300 3000 species from grass to at the same plant of the sandal and ready to accept as the uh, uh, plant as a neighbor instead of as a weed so this way it will help for uh, adapting uh, the agroforest system then how to cultivate whether we will go for block plantation or agroforestry i can say it is agroforestry because as it is a parasite you need to adopt any food crop or articulated crop in uh, with a uh, sandal so that is way it is help to uh, naturally to adopt the agroforest system and that also there is a one possibility some farmer they have the already existing uh, mango the coconut grows or some other plantation in that also we can introduce uh sandal as a enriching planting so that way also we can able to uh, cultivate the sandal so by uh, existing if you introduce the sandal the existing that way uh, we can reduce the cost of cultivation also because already the host is readily available so that cost to spend for the host plant management and the establishment will be avoided then now it is uh, is suitable for agroforestry mean there is a it will fulfill all the criteria say agroforestry trees see the it, growth is medium to uh, size of the tree is medium to small to medium and growth is also fast growth and crown is light crown that is one of the important factor for agroforestry any tree you want to adopt in the agroforestry you know, the crown should be light because uh, that if the light crown it will allow the partial light to the under growing crops and another thing it, it should be easily uh, propagated and drought tolerant these are the certain character all these characters is uh, help to meet out the criteria of the sand uh, agroforestry trees and how what is the difference between normal agroforest system and sandalwood agroforest system in the normal course it, uh, agroforest system we have only two uh, only three system trees crops and livestock whereas in the sandal based we adding one more uh, component that is a sandal host so when you adding anything any system additional component it will make the system will be very complex and cumbersome so that need to be managed properly
and now management will come to the management there is a different uh, issues we have to i already told there is a uh, three four component so this we have to individually manage sandal plantation sandal tree management one part and host plant management one part in addition that there is a sometime we will make the intercropping between the rows there will be a interface in that area we will do some agriculture crop for for that also we need separate management so this way it is the we have to concentrate on three aspect over not working okay, now that establishment while do uh, making uh, cultivation or establishment of sandal plantation there are the several factors we have to keep in mind the first one is choice of uh, land and is another important factor quality planting and third is host plant what is the type of host what is the ratio of the host so whether it is a perennial or uh, woody plants you are using or uh, articulture crop or agriculture crop so this is all this factor we have to consider then another thing uh, another minor factors uh, irrigation manuring weeding this sort of thing another major one is uh, shade management when you are doing that uh, intercropping especially the uh, interface between the line you want to do some agriculture crop just in uh, north karnataka they are do, they are uh, cultivating bengal crop and some places they will use uh, pumpkin or other uh, agriculture crop in that case we have to manage a uh, shade management to get the proper yield from the intercrop and another most fa important factor is protection against the theft that is a, one of the important factor and highly uh, cost of uh, cost costly affair so these are the things we have to take in care then in case of site selection so site selection the topography of the land should be well drained and slopy land is good see in the picture there is a plain and hillock so when we are observed that the hillock area well drained and uh, that area is rocky place but there the sandal growth was better than the plain level land and uh, another factor it grows all type of soil however it most probably the red soil is good for sandal hardwood and oil content and avoid water logging so water logging is important factor see in the same fields of land there is a one part in the third picture it shows that uh, this portion it is entirely is a water log so it most almost 100 percent of the plant, sandal plants are dead we did not find any single plant whereas in the upper land there is all the plants are healthy and grows well so there is a we found the luxurious growth also. so it means water logging should be avoided for the sandal and um, regarding elevation and rainfall generally uh, elevation should be more than 1000 meter is good for high oil content and hardwood formation and uh, rainfall should be less than 1000 so this is the optimal level but however you can try with other uh, elevation for example north india we can try up to 650 meter uh, elevation and so other places up to 1800 meter it can grow then these are the normal procedure while doing and other like other crop what you are doing the regular practice leveling land summer plowing and digging of the pit so these are the regular practices as the farmer will know well this aspect and this is the another i think this in the last lecture you might know then how to produce the quality planting stock and quality planting material means uh, while planting time the ceiling side more than one feet tight and color dia will be more than three mm uh, dia thickness should be there and the stem you will see the stem will be like a brown color that shows the sturdiness of the ceiling so it means it can be able to tolerate even the summer season uh, to some extent so that is why we have to dressing the ceiling should be hardy and it will be more than one feet height so this type of ceiling you have to prefer for the planting and planting have the different uh, method and this things unlike other uh, crop like hurricane or coconut we cannot have any fixed design 
it is uh, based on your choice of host plant so uh, accordingly you can change the design whether it's a border planting or boundary planting line planting square or triangle so it will be depends upon the uh, host uh, choice and time of planting and uh, season of planting. Normally, we have to do the planting uh, season is monsoon or just uh, start of the monsoon or at onset of the monsoon. And planting, normally, we advise to do the planting early morning or in the evening. And uh, evening most probable because when you do the evening pruning, the plant able to tolerate the trans uh, transplanting shock. Because in the whole night, you will get the cooling cooling and power rule condition that helps the plant to set the normal conditions. And this is the pitting. This is also normal size 45, 45 inches centimeter. After pitting, you leave for the land for uh, weathering for one month. And uh, and farmer, what will they, they will do pitting with the JCP or pitting and they will add uh, 10 to 15 kg of uh, well decomposed farmyard menu and very rarely they apply chemicals for uh, menus or fertilizer menus. So. And this is I told different design. So accordingly we can plan it. And the Kunkai planting is uh, good, uh, but it is uh, very difficult for the intercropping. So, whereas what you will know, you will make uh, in the four side uh, host and central, you put the sand, uh, sandalwood. What you will know, doing the intercropping or plowing land or weeding or some other operation, it is very difficult to carry out. So, this we have to think. Otherwise, this, this plant, this design will accommodate more number of plants. And this trench planting is uh, applicable for in the area where the dry or where you are getting very ra low rainfall. So in that, uh, yeah, those areas you can adopt for the trench planting. So even you will get less amount of rainfall, it is held for conserve the water. And this is the ridge planting. This is opposite to high, uh, opposite to dry land, where you get the high rainfall. So you can make trenches. Like uh, even that banana or caricanet, they will make trenches and the bunt they can make the planting. And this is the while uh, doing planting, what would do normally that plant will be taken out to the field directly. So, uh, what I we will advise you, you can uh, before taking a uh, suppose today we are planting, means you can water thoroughly in the uh, one day before uh, night. So what will that, that plant will get more water, it can be able to tolerate to the sifting or transportation shock or disturbance. So and also uh, sealing, you can hold it like this. Instead of uh, pull, uh, directly holding the plant, you can pull, uh, you can hold the containers. And while planting, you can remove the polybags and without disturbing the ro uh, root ball, you have to plant it like this. And uh, while making the pit, you have to see that, that uh, this root ball fully is covered. So it means about uh, two to three, three times of uh, diameter of the size width is required. If it is 10 centimeter, you have to make that width up will be about 25 centimeter width. And this is the normal design, the people farmer widely following three by three within the uh, sandal to sandal. And uh, permanent host will be longer distance, about 15 meter. This is some example I am telling. This is not hard rule you can follow like this. I already told according to our host choice, it will be vary. And now it is a host. Why we need the host? Host, I already told it is a semi parasite. It is like a handicapped. It needs support of other plant to provide the nutrient to the sandal. And uh, Especially N, N, P, and amino acid obtained from the host and K and potassium, K and calcium from the soil. And further, it is host is required throughout the life. Even if you don't have any host, it can be take the uh, 
other plants the same uh, root uh, uh, same sandal plant of other adjacent one you can set uh, take for the support and while choosing that host plant uh, there is a right choice and right design and spacing otherwise if you are not properly concentrating on the host sometimes the host plant overtake the sandal growth so this things has to be keep in mind and while selecting the host host uh, is not only provide the nutrient but also it provide the regular income to the farmer and uh, we have to maintain the woes in such a way that in the young stage it provides the overhead and the later uh, side after grown it should be give the lateral side not overhead and the woes there is a primary woes secondary woes and uh, territory or it is a long term woes so the primary woes generally we will use the small and succulent and good copies and because we have to uh, periodically we cut it the host and uh, more than 300 species are listed however that altanandra silly brinjal tomato and uh, were mimosa pedica that is also some cases they are using red gram also but red gram sometime what will then it grow it is fast growth and it will overtake the sandal then we have to prune it periodically and the second category is a secondary host Secondary was when the primary was dead or it will be poor growth. So we have to replace at the end of first or uh, one to three years end. It helps the nutrient supply and it can survive six to eight years. Secondary was most probably is, uh, most probably is the fr uh, fruit crops. Uh, like in Karnataka, most commonly used to mango, pomegranate, rambal, and lemon, then curry leaf, mulberry, and may. Uh, so it is the uh, it is site specific. For example, in coal or drier area region, Kolar and uh, uh, this Kolai call this area they are using mango, and Kaveri and this area they are using pomegranate. So like that, this idea, this preference of uh, secondary use is depends upon the site or it is agroclimatic zone wise it will be where. I have a question. Can I complete? Can you wait? Please, I will complete sure, that. Sure. Take the question. Sure. Okay. And this is see the picture. Some people they will use only one host. Some people they will use three, two host also. So see in the first picture there is a three host. They put the Casuarina and uh, Cisplania. Uh, so there are, and also they will use the primary red crab. So in this in this case, why the most of the most recommended uh, host plant is Casuarina means the crown is very light, and will not even will make very close will not make any impact on the sandal. But other plants, if you use other uh, some people they are saying Pungam, Pungam pineata is a woody species, perennial, and what will happen? Uh, it is uh, the leaves are very thick, will make the crowdy things. So so we have to choose the right choice of the host plant. And in this in second picture, you can see they put the Cespania. It is about two years. At the end of the two years, the Cespania plants are dead. Yes. So and also the, the permanent was should be considered when both uh, primary and secondary plants are dead, and uh, a total of seventy species are identified as a suitable permanent host. And the IWST also tested about 32 host plants, and they are the ranked based on the growth performance with the different hosts. So we found that Casuarina is the better permanent host. And generally, it is found that with, uh, with even Australian people are uh, Australian studies also listed. We have to use the leguminous crop. Leguminous crop is better choice for the host plant. And this is some uh, technical issue, how that plant will take uh, nutrient between the host and the sandal. There is a true, uh, this uh, sandal and host nutrient tra transport is like a two-way transport. In either way, either plant will take the nutrient through the help of uh, astorial connection. This astorial connection acts as a physical as well as physiological bridge to these plants. Sometimes what happens, some plant will take uh, over nutrient from the sandal and some cases, 
uh, even that sand will take more nutrient. It is depends upon their uh, absorbing or it is uh, physiological uh, potential. For example, in case of uh, Kerala, they did one study, Casarina plus uh, coconut uh, in combination with sandal. There is a 29% uh, of the nutrient goes to the sandal. And whereas Casarina and rubber they did, there is a 79%. So there, this type of interaction will be takes place between the plants. And uh, when the when uh, how we can know that uh, host and sandal will be in good association or it is the association is not good. No, it is it that morphology of the sandal will indicate or it shows that that association is not proper. For example, if you are uh, host is good or it is highly compatible, now the plants are uh, leaf are very thick and very greenish, whereas the plants uh, doesn't have proper association of the host plant. The plant shows that yellowing, the leaves are uh, small size and very fast growth. See the below feature, there is a host plant are dead. So these are the host plant dead. Here there is no host, almost they are maintained for two years. So these are the source of, but where in case of this is the uh, Cisvania and the plants are very greenish. And this is the same plant, same wherever that we found that live uh, red gram plant the leaves are very dark so this so this is the indications and uh, while selecting the host plant how we can pay uh, we what are the criteria or what are the factor we have to understand it should uh, pay to the growth rate and canopy size architecture of the plant whether it is a light or dense crowd and economic value and further it should be locally available suppose we are suggesting some different, uh, different host plant it is not available in your local area so then it is a uh, pro it is problem for the farmer so we uh, you have to take the locally available host plant uh, beside the growth of host plant at any cost should not be exceed the growth of sander as it cause that uh, competition for the light and other nutrient for the plant uh, for sander So this is again regarding the host, right choice, right design and maintain in such a way that this already I explained. And this is some list of uh, primary host, secondary host and intermediate host plants. These are commonly practiced in the formula. And some uh, and another important aspect when you use the host plant in different root uh, system, so what will it help now? That plant will take in different levels nutrient from the soil. When you use same level of suppose, uh, for example, uh, you see that the uh, top which is just like a block plantation. If you use only, sorry. So in this last picture, this is a block plant, is monoculture. When you use the monoculture, all the roots are in the same level. So it will abs abs extract the nutrient in the same zone, entire uh, nutrient will be exhausted within few years. So what will happen is the growth of the plant will be affected. Whereas in the agroforest system, the, the root system will go in different level. So they will take in different level, the soil, overall soil fertility will not be depleted. So this is the concept we have to, into, we can use uh, different host plant. And farmer already they are practice so many host plants. So just I do some other pictures. Uh, they are already experimented. This is a sandal plus gova, jasmine, and sandal plus mahogany. So this is why I told sandal it supports for wood security also because uh, farmers are using mahogany, melia, and uh, even some cases they are using teak also. And this is Cespania. This is again Cespania plus sandal. This is mango, one year old mango, mango plus sandal, sandal, umbla. 
and this is even people are using goa with anipi in this uh, in uh, ram durga the farmer using anipi also planted and uh, it is hybrid goa he has pruned periodically he is getting uh, uh, revenue from the goa also up to maturity of the sandal this sandal arcanet sandal soya bean moringa also you can use suba pul and this is a melia melia and and there is a in polar there is a, another success story the farmer are using sandal plus mulberry mulberry also successful they are getting additional income as well as sandal cultivations and this is uh, banana coconut even cashew nut also people are practicing silver oak so like that almost all articles are crop and tree crop there you know only thing you have to manage properly and do the proper spacing and sometimes the farmer uh, they will do very close spacing what will happen the close spacing when you do uh, for example uh, when you use the melia dubia or other uh, casuarina so you will cut after uh, Six, seven years or eight years. So while cutting, it will make the damage to sandal. So at the time, only the farmer realizing. So we did the mistake. We should not do close spacing. So you have to realize. You have to think the future of the tree cultivation or tree harvesting. So how we can design? What the spacing will be required? This is like there are so many form of. Uh, Sandal cultivations. This is citrus plus uh, sandal, non novel jamun plus sandal, mango. And these are the spacing. Now overall, we made the survey in all over Karnataka in different agro climate zone. These are the spacing, and these are the common host plant they are for adopted. See that most common spacing is three by three between the sandal and uh, oh, sandal to oh, two by two. So this is the uh, spacing they are followed. And sometimes that uh, wrong choice or wrong planting of host will make the negative effect on sandal. For example. Sandal plus mahogany, they are planted in the same field, and uh, terminalia species also they are planted. Some case we found one of the farmer field, terminalia also supporting uh, good growth, but the problem they are planted, uh, they are, the advantage they are planted wider spacing. Whereas here we are planted in the same field, so what will be the sandal completely suppressed? There is no growth of sandal, and another case is punga. So you you should take care when you are planting the. Permanent host that is a long term host. You should be very careful. You have to keep the proper spacing. This is irrigation zone. That generally sandal is a drought hardy species and it not require much water. But however, you see this type of soil is very stony soil and uh, rocky places. This places you need water. If you don't water properly, especially during summer. The plant will look like this. Entire plant will will thing and uh, dry. So we are and also while doing watering, you during summer you don't do only one water. You have to do pre uh, continuous two uh, frequency of water will be very frequent. With ten days interval, you can make two to three watering. Otherwise, what will I do? One watering, it will become the just like a hot water. It will cause more uh, wilting and more uh, dryness to the soil as well as plants. Then manuring, manuring. If you apply it, the growth is very good, and you will get uh, fast growth. If you don't have uh, any manuring, or uh, generally we recommend you can do well decomposed manure. That is sufficient. No need of any fertilizer. There is two fold. One is left side is the non manure plant. Another one is manuring plant. It shows good and uh, healthy health of the soil. 
and sometimes what we are advising don't remove entire weeds around the sandalwood uh, so you have to retain because that weeds also support as a host for the sandal so it's not in complete clear fill the land see that one of the farm in mysore he has retained the, the just strip of the weeds along the sandal rows he has cleaned only in the intermediate area whereas this fellow he has completely he has removed everything each and cross with he has removed so we can maintain in such a way that uh, small weeds and and there is one another advantage if you maintain this type of uh, uh, undergrowth around that plant it will uh, help to avoid the sun cloud otherwise there is in the uh, sandal stem there will be a sun cloud that is crack will be formed to in the western side of the tree and this is state management why we have to do the state management what happened uh, this first picture this one of the farmer he has did uh, uh, agasia that is a sesbania plus uh, leaf and sandal so this completely covered these two plants are covered completely cover the sandal sandal is very difficult to find out or is so it will just like a sophisticating effect uh, coughing on the sandal so in this case you have to make a pruning you have to just open up the canopy for the sandal growth and whereas this see if you use the cancerina there is a not it even is very close to sandal it will not make any effect so that is why i told you have to choose the right uh, host plant if choose the host plant you have to do proper management so in this case you have to use silver oak also it is there bad host what will the since the silver oak leaf fall over the sandal and make a blackish uh, 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 and and it will reduce the photosynthesis efficiency of the because it is a slow decomposing plant and this is again that is shade how sunlight is important for the sandalwood see the full sunlight the plant growth like this and if it is outside shade at night it will move towards the sunlight and that the third picture in the first row you can find that melia plantation they are planted melia with sandal and sandal was planted very later so what will happen the entire week become as umbrella shade is completely covered the plant will not get sunlight so in this case you have to just open up the by pruning the branches of melia another thing this this i told now we have to maintain the grasses or weeds around the plant otherwise you will get this type of crops on the sandal stem and sandal and other thing is a very sensitive plant for the physical energy you have to take care to avoid safety and grazing also this is a very good fodder for sandal sorry uh, goats and uh, cattle so what happened the first picture see that uh, goat is completely removed the sandal path and eaten away so you have to keep that also take uh, to keep away the animals from the sandal and some farmer they will cut and feed the sandal as a fodder and this is why we need the pruning pruning you do that is already told wherever you want to do some uh, intercropping you go for pruning and also you will get uh, the pruning means if you get if you are not pruning that the plant will get like this so this busy appearance uh, because the entire energy will spend for this type of pruning instead of going the height it will spend the energy for this purpose and that is why the people are advising you do for pruning but pruning you have to do properly and scientifically otherwise it have the negative effect more on the sandal and so some of the photos see this the farmer what will happen he has pruned the entire thing because of his uh, uh over knowledge so uh, at any case we should not cut the branch uh, more than one third or fifty uh, percent so you have to maintain the uh, canopy forty uh, to fifty percent otherwise you will get this type of things In some cases you will like uh, chick chick like a snake.
so this type of things should be avoided and uh, otherwise you leave it as such no issue again whenever you make any physical injury you have to do some uh, product mixture there is natural way of pruning also you can see one of the farmer what he has done is uh, just he wrapped uh, up to up to this level with coconut leaves so what will happen at this because are lacking light uh, lack of light this uh, branches automatically will take so there is no physical injury but the branches will be reduced so in that way he is doing this is like is a innovation way that way also the we can try this is matured i think there is a next class will be there the economics and which part of power we will take you hmm. yeah so this is the things i want to share with you and this is one slide uh, what is the future scope of uh, indian sandal cultivation whether the, some people they say whether in the future we will get demand or we will get the price so another 10 to 15 years there is a definitely there is good scope for sandal especially our indian sandal have the good demand in the international market there is no doubt we will get good profit in the future okay thank you for your patient now i think you can ask one or two questions i think somebody has raised <laughs> ah okay there is a interaction session you can post or you can put your query in the chat box will be asked thank you thank you sir our third session will be on uh, like uh, where uh, all farmers will be expecting this Uh, artwood estimation and economics of growing sandalwood by our Dr. B N Divakar Sir, Scientist, T I W S T. अंगे इतना पढ़ने का ये सी मोटे सार्स नार्ड वर्किंग प्रॉपर्ली Okay, dear participants, uh, there is little bit uh, time we are taking for loading the next program. In the meantime, if there is any specific question, one or two question related to Dr. Durey presentation, you are welcome to ask. I have a question to ask. Ah, uh, please. We grow soybeans and wheat between the sandalwood, as those are rotational crops. Sir, sir, be a little louder, sir. So my question is, can we grow soya beans and wheat between the sandalwood as those are rotational crops? Thank you. Soya bean and wheat. In Madhya Pradesh, uh, they are having the soya bean with this. Uh... Yes, sir. You can grow. I told na there is a Bengal gram is almost uh, like soya bean only. I, I one of the slide I told that soya bean also, but I didn't. I think you are not uh, observed. There is one slide is a soya bean plus sandal. But the only thing we have to take care the water should not stagnate. It has to run the dry uh, properly drain drain the uh, water. Otherwise, no issues, sir. That is why when uh, even doing a plantation itself, you can make slight slope instead of very plain or level land. Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Hi. Uh... Uh, please, madam. 
Durai sir, in one of your slide you mentioned reverse translocation also. Can you uh, please elaborate a little on that? Uh, like, what is the mechanism? Re is it possible reverse translocation from sandal to the host? Yeah, this I also told one of the BAC student in KU Kerala Agriculture University. Rucha, it was, uh, she has done the work and she has published her uh, uh, research finding in the current science, I think 2009 uh, 20. You can find the detailed uh, mechanism and how they are did, and everything is available. You get into the detailed mechanism, the physiological mechanism, how it will be reverse transportation will take place. So kindly refer that paper. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So they have used uh, isotope studies. They have used isotope studies to see the movement of the nutrients. Okay, sir. Ready, Sir, my name is Vamsi. Like, uh, I have a small uh, query, sir. Actually. Sir, please, little louder, sir. Sir, sir my name is Vamsi, and uh, I have a small query, sir. Ah, so actually, I'm, I'm, I'm planning for a plantation of uh, the sandalwood between the coconut uh, plants and all. Uh, mm. The coconut plants are like almost like three years of its age. So, uh, will the growth of sandalwood, uh, will, it, will it affect to this coconut plant, like, with the uh, harvest and all? Sir, you are the best uh, person to decide whether um, the required sunlight for the sandal is available in your area. Uh, we don't know um, the, what is the height of the um, coconut and what is the spacing, it matters. Yes, sir. So spacing is like I gave almost like a 8 meters of space. Uh, like then, then, then there won't be any issue, sandal can grow very nicely. No problem. Okay. Sir, so, so effect on the coconut plants, uh, will it be any effect no. on coconut plants? No, 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 there won't be any. No. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I have one more question to ask. Spread, no. The maximum root spread of coconut is 1, 1 to 1.5 meters. Our understanding, the major 60 to 70 percent of the roots will be there within the 1 to 1.5 meters from the coconut tree. And only important is uh, you should take care that the, the leaf fall or the uh, should not be on the sandwood plants. If the, there is a leaf fall on the sandwood plants which is grown beside, then there will be the crown will be affected. There will be physical damage on the sandalwood trees. So you should take care of that when you grow with sandal and arachnid. Yes, with coconut. And can you tree. also grow maize in between sandalwood? Yes, you can grow in, uh, in if the sand. Sandalwood uh, uh, plants are um, it's, it's not it has not shoot up the crown or it has not is more than a five years or four years of age. And it's a small plant. Initial stages, you can go for intercropping. That's not issue. We do encourage okay. intercropping with the uh, intermediate host like papaya or some other plants which can be taken out within two to three years of age in the initial stage of planting. Likewise, we can have agriculture also. They can go with the kajanas kajan or maize or ragi, uh, anything, even fodder crops. They can grow in between in the initial stages, but once okay, crowds but then, starts developing, then you should be very careful. Okay, so you're recommending after three to four years we should stop uh, doing the rotational cropping and like maize and all I'm these not, things. I'm not telling I'm not telling you to stop, sir. It depends on the growth there. Suppose in your soil conditions in the dry lands, with slow growth is there, then you can have up to fifth year also, no problem. Based on the condition there prevailing there in your field. You can decide upon. Usually, after 50, 50 years onwards, the crown starts spreading in general. So, at that time, the crown management, the root management comes into picture. Because when you start growing agriculture crops, they will be plowing or some other uh, mechanical works will be done in between the rows. Okay, sir. Correct. Then, um, Dr. Dure, uh, Devagar, you can start. Huh? Good morning, everybody. Since morning, we had a very good. Uh, uh, topics like how to 
grow sand root seedlings in nursery or so that we can take up for next planting and after that seedlings are ready how it should be planted how it should be managed and these are the topics we had discussion what should be the host how it should be managed or irrigation or fertilization uh, many things we, we discussed and it was presented by dr dorai and now i am just concentrating on two issues one is the hard root estimation and economics of growing sand see these two components are very vital because once we are having a sand root grown of more than 10 years of age then every farmer will be very curious to know whether there is a hard root or not first second thing if hard root is there then you will be very curious to know what should what may be the amount i am going to get per tree so that and whom i should sell or so these questions we keep on cropping so to these issues i am having a topic on hard root estimation and economics of growing sand root as we all know sand root is uh, means sand root is very well known to uh, to indian system or indian culture historically it is there been used as cosmetic medicine and many of the ritualistic offerings and it has been referred in many ancient texts and traditions which is very well known to everyone coming what actually the economics is economics is defined as a science that deals with making the distributing selling and purchasing of goods and services that means it is a social science which studies the way the society chooses to use its limited resources which have alternative uses to produce goods and services and distribute them among different groups of people this is a general meaning or definition of uh, you can take it as economics but when it comes to sandalwood it is very very critical and it gets another new dimensions to this sand economics because the sandalwood is one of the highly prized wood and sandalwood cultivation is having lot of challenges as it is also having lot of options and like inclusion of alternate host since it is a semi semi parasite a lot of management is required and you have to com combine with different tree crops and having different age rotations and maintain it very well so all these complications makes it very challenging so the economics will be more complex once again and exam economics if you see the alternate host is also been considered because the alternate host also fetches some money for when you are cultivating in sand root and this also helps in understanding and think strategically and make decisions whether in my land in my patch the sand root should be grown or not grown or if it is grown how it should be grown whether in boundaries or in a full scale plantations plantation a plantation wise or how we should be taken up so these all questions comes in and this economics will economics of sandalwood will be the one of the major factor in deciding whether to take up sandalwood or not <coughs> coming to the some of the just common plant species grown with sandalwood there are many agriculture horticulture and commercial crops and tree crops being grown there are more than 3000 host been suggested for cultivating uh, sandalwood along with sandalwood and some of the things we are showing here and and there are many questions if and but still going on because we are not having a perfect proof which host will increase the economics of the sandal there are many ifs and buts going on and this is how this is mela uh, arbaria this is uh, the plant tree uh, tree crop being planted with sandal a drip irrigation i'm just showing the photo just to see how they have maintained it leveled it and prepared the land and they have gone for drip irrigation in sandal and uh, this is a, how they have made and this is the two months old after planting six months out of planting how it grows slowly and the, in many areas they have even adopted sprinklers and this is about the kolar areas where they have grown with uh, intermediate host like papaya and in mulberry also they are growing uh, sandalwood this is about the mango and papaya and down saspenia they are growing and uh, saspenia as a host in mango plantations this uh, sandalwood will be very much boosted by saspenia because as it is a nitrogen fixing and this is one of the uh, four year old sandalwood plantation chitradurga 
is about a 3 year old plantation uh, in hyderabad telangana this is about a sandwood with pilia and i just showed few photographs uh, the sandwood being cultivated with different tree crops and if you see about the economics the first is the cost of cultivation especially we start with the selection of land once land is there then we go for uh, site preparations in this there will be cost of uh, site preparation is done then cost of seedlings will come labor pitting uh, per day some 20 Labors can put uh, some 400 bits in one day. This is a one hectare basis I am calculating and I am giving in brief. And there is some, what you call, you can use the two, two seeds, one kg of two seeds can be taken and they will go for uh, Kajana's Kajan cultivation with sandal wood plant, in the, in the sandal wood plantation between the sandal wood rows. And they are adding fertilizers and they are having a labor fertilizer for labor charges for fertilizer application, FOM application and also fencing and watering borewell charges here we have taken up as uh, uh, means like 400 rupees uh, so for, for one hectare 400 meters there and uh, 65 uh, 6 lakh 50 thousand rupees uh, as a re running kilometer cost it cost around uh, 2 lakh 60 thousand for fencing barbed wire fencing and uh, here watering we have taken as a borewell with pipeline pump set it's almost 3 lakh 50 thousand rupees and next comes after this initial investment in the second year onwards there will be some small amount of fertilization maintenance then the major amount will be for uh, security purpose for initially for two to three years we need uh, 24 months we need one lakh twenty thousand rupees security one security is maintained and after that some four to five nine years we need uh, seven seven lakh twenty thousand rupees for a security and 10 to 15 years, uh, we need some uh, 14 lakh 40 thousand rupees up to 15 years to maintain the sandwood uh, for under security. And once it is maintained and grown under secured condition, then the interesting part is the hardwood. This is the first morphological indication whether the hardwood formation in the standing trees have been taken up or not. If there is no hardwood, it will be very plain. And if there is a hardwood, initially just started, a small cracks on the bark will appear. And a very distinct cracks, visible, can show an indication that hardwood has been formed. But only thing is, it should not be confused, confused with the sun scorching effect of the westerly sun. That has to be taken care. And if the cracks are found throughout the, all along the, uh, the tree's uh, circumference, then it's one of the indication hardwood is there. Once it is morphologically, uh, this identification is known, then we can go for using manual increment borer. This manual increment borer, we can use this increment borer to check the hardwood formation by taking a core sample, will be around some 6 mm uh, core, will be uh, drilled and will be take, taken out to check it. And this is how the 16 year old plant we tried. And once it is done, we can analyze this core sample. This analysis is very clear because there will be distinct coloration along the core samples where hardwood, sapwood and uh, will be will make out to measure how much percentage of hardwood is formed can be measured. This is one of the power increment borer watch which we have devised in our institute where this hardwood uh, core can be taken with within a fraction within one or two minutes we can have one core sample with it will not have more uh, no need much labor or uh, no much time is required. It is very fast and it will not strain you much. So we have devised this uh, technique and this is also helpful for sandal and many other hard species like red sandal also it is very much applicable. This is how the 15 years sandal tree so has, they have started harvesting and once they have harvested uh, there it is very clear how the, the hardwood is being marked here you can see. The very clear hardwood formation is seen and there is a transition zone which you can call it as a mixed wood because when you freshly cut there will be some sapwood influence and moisture influence even on the boundaries of the hardwood so that makes a transition zone and after drying it is very clearly make out this hardwood and sapwood and also the clear bark you can see.
this is an andari plantation 17 year old plantation ideally how they have cut and they have harvested the trees <laughs> and they have staked it there uh, godown but uh, which is to be disposed for ksdl this is just a small typical example uh, i am just showing if you are planting 1.5 feet uh, maybe some 45 cm 30 cm below the ground level even if it is theft or something the heart will be saved that much heart will be saved just an indication i'm just showing this one of the innovative methods of uh, growing sandalwood and it has been harvested already and this is about the matured sandalwood trees disc which we are harvested from uh, in our campus at wst you can see a very good heart wood formation is seen this is also from iwst very big trees now i will tell to i will just explain about a new with innovative method of estimation of heart wood in farm land farm land using electric resistant tomograph we this is the instrument called as electrical resistant tomograph and this has been imported from germany and this <coughs> sorry, this instrument works on the basis of the resistivity offered within the tree when uh, amount of current is passed see this is how we collect the sensors i have just taken example of teak disc to explain you and when amount of current is passed inside this uh, tree that will pass the from one sensor to other sensors and it moves and you can see how the image is captured at the end and once image is captured we can analyze the amount of heart wood even using this is uh, ert and in this ert image which is a non destructive there is no need to give uh, take any core sample or damage the tree even They're just putting a nails around the tree a minimum by eight eight nails or a tree is more uh, eight nails around the tree is enough this is a wood disc what we were having wood stump we took the readings and also the ert image and this is about the three dimensional structure where a tree is measured in three dimension and uh, the heart root can be estimated using this image also so we will come to know how much amount of heart root or the quantity of heart root is there in the standing tree <laughs> in our uh, workshop when we uh, analyzed this stump the sandalwood stump and we found say 86.77 similarity using this electrical resistant tomograph and we had an experiment in the farmers field in devanalli bevanalli and we saw that this instrument was very effective in estimating heart root almost 90% similarity was seen in case of the standing trees next coming to this uh, we have know that economics we i showed the initial slide what are the expenses involved in cultivation of sandalwood the initial stage and also the security now coming to the income if you see the income suppose if you have planted one hectare of uh, plantation uh, sandalwood one hectare of uh, uh, area with sandalwood at a spacing of 5 to 5 four trees can be accommodated in one hectare if you see that 10% of the tree is dead or it may be some cases there may be uh, there is no hard wood initiation also they have been recorded and 360 trees will be severed and if you take at least 10 kg of wood is been uh, we can obtain a hard wood both from stem and hard wood, sorry root wood uh, maybe is of 3 3600 kg of hard wood and each kg of hard wood is it varies with respect to the category but on an average if you see 6000 rupees if you take it will be around uh, 2 crore 16 lakh rupees will be the for heart wood and in case of the sap wood if you see uh, nearly 10000 kg around 30 kg of sap wood at a 15 years of age we are expecting and in that 10800 kg of sap wood is obtained uh, from 360 trees and if you take a rate of 70 rupees kg it is 7 lakh 56000 rupees from sap wood the total income from sap wood and heart wood is around 2 crores 23000 sorry 23 lakhs 56000 rupees and when you have an agreement with ksdl they will deduct some around, around some 20% as a processing and transportation and final income we can expect around 1 crore 78 lakhs 84800 rupees but when you take out the cost of cultivation per hectare it is around 46 lakhs we may have to shell out for maintenance up to 15 years including security and all other expenses fencing irrigation everything then the ultimate nut is 
is 1 crore 32 uh, lakhs 84,800 rupees per hectare. And when you convert it to per acre, it is around 53 uh, lakhs 13,920 rupees is an, an, an average expected yield from sandwood cultivation. This is subject to condition wherein at least minimum of 10 kg of hardwood has been obtained from 15 years old trees. If the hardwood content in this tree falls down, the economics comes down. And if it is below 5 kg, for example, if it is below 5 kg per tree, the economics of sandal is not so viable to further have the, uh, have the cultivation. This is another estimation of KSDL where in 2006, uh, Goda VSV they have done and there he has taken a, a calculation of 2500 uh, rupees per hardwood and uh, the net profit for hectare he has told about 145 lakhs which is matching with my calculation recently done and he has at that time it was 2500 kg uh, rupees now you have taken 6000 uh, rupees kg of hardwood and his yield is some 20 kg per tree but my calculation is goes with some 10 kgs per tree this so, and there is one more prospect. <laughs> there is one more uh, prospective uh, in sandalwood cultivation is the seed part. In many of the sandalwood plantations, uh, around some three years of age, the sandal uh, trees starts producing these uh, seeds, and the seeds is having the very good oil content in that. And if you see, if you take out that seed, an average three to five years old tree produces some two to three kg of sandalwood seeds. And at eight, uh, eight to ten years, it starts producing about four to six kg of sandalwood seeds. Around four thousand to four thousand five hundred seeds will be there in per kg. And average oil is around thirty-five to past forty percent. And this oil is, uh, this oil possesses a diuretic, antiviral, and many other uh, what do you call medicinal properties, especially for skin uh, diseases and the, this thing. And this having an anti-aging property because of the fatty acid called zimnimic acid and this is been already been taken up with many of the the herbal product manufacturers or many other industries are coming up to take up but <coughs> sorry but unfortunately what is happening is we are not able to have any interaction we have heard the cases where uh, many of many uh, activities are being planned using the sandal seeds not only for raising nurseries, but for also the oil and the extraction of oil, preparing the medicines, um, exp exploiting the medicinal value which is there in this oil has been tried up. And many farmers are very enthusiastic to have the selling for this uh, seed for this oil content. And uh, we are not having any much link with many industries in this regard. We are still exploring, and even uh, we are. Uh, we had a discussion with Central Government Ministry for using this soil, sorry, sandwood seed, especially for oil uh, extraction and uh, selling it out to make the sandwood cultivation more profitable. Still, a lot has to be explored on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. B. N. Devagar. Uh, in the mean time of loading in the next presentation if there is one or two questions only relevant to this presentation uh, you are welcome to uh, ask please sir <clears throat> i am s janardhanan from kerala retired ifs officer yes sir and I worked for almost seven years in Marayur area. Right. My own experience, what I can say is, of my 15 years, the hardwood formation will be less than 5 kg per tree. And now you told the it will be more than 10 kg. And if a farmer is doing this farming this, he will get crores of rupees from an acre. Why I am saying is... I calculated, I calculated based on hectare, sir. Per acre, around 53 lakhs income we can no, no, simply, my question is... Yes, sir. By 15 years, 
yes normally from a sandalwood tree what is expected how much uh, hard to is expected sir, by 15 yes. years yes sir yes sir that's what recently when we had the videography and photography of the har- harvesting bun done bit uh, done in namdari in madigiri uh, talok uh, id halli namdari plantation which is of uh, 17 years old we have seen the trees having even 10 kg of hardwood per tree we have seen because i am sorry kindly they have they have cultivating they are using alternate host as right here tinctoria and they have harvested there are trees even having 10 kg with both the stem root and the root root in case of forest areas when it is grown you are very correct your less than 5 kg have been recorded in many of the forest areas here in and... the management conditions on agriculture field where they use lot of fertilizers or irrigation they give and they take care there are chances of getting an average of 10 kg if it is maintained well and taken care if the economics is going below 5 kg per tree it will be just some maybe uh, some 30000 rupees per tree at a 15 years of age which is not really economically viable i do agree with no what i am saying is of course we must plant lot of uh, the sandalwood tree there is no doubt for that yes, one sabu a nellimitam sabu one farm uh, nursery owner he has yes, uh, given wide publicity saying yes. that by yes. 15 years from an acre 1.5 crores more than 1.5 crore revenue will be obtained and he got this information from iwst no sir from that is very wrong. so it's not of and and uh, one more thing if you farmers here started cutting rubber and all and they started planting sandalwood thinking that after 15 years they will get 1.5 crore rupees from their plantation what i am saying is no doubt sandal has to be implemented planted in large scale no doubt but what i mean is it may take minimum of 30 to 40 years to get at least 40 years will be needed to get this much quantity from my own experience uh, sir janath uh, sir i have some small uh, uh, clarification to you you know our i don't come but you would have visited sometime since you were a bus officer yeah Uh, see, this is all. Uh, our campus is really a uh, naturally sandalwood growing area. Okay. 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 In that, if you see now, I mean, there are some five, six years back because of the 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 most of the uh, bigger trees, more than uh, I mean, um, two three feet girth were extracted and sold. I mean, given to Karnataka uh, Forest Department. There are few trees left. See, if you see. in my experience there is a tree in front of our uh, building that is more than 30 years old that is naturally maintained or grown in the it is almost like a forest type of environment it is about 42 cm girth but i am sure it is have more than 30 years of age because i have service of more than 22 years in this institute and when i came also it is the same size ah. number 1 now uh, around 9 years back i planted a few trees in my backyard of my house okay there i did okay. not give any extra care but i used to grow with the small uh, greens uh, bendi then brinjal okay tulsi also so in the process what will happen these annuals or this horticultural crops we used to pour water regularly okay in the process okay. that trees reached the girth more than this 30 years old tree in 9 years okay okay sir so what i want to tell uh, any living th- living organism like trees respond to the environment environment so if you give a little better environment they respond nicely so growth is not, not a issue number one recently i saw in 13 year old trees are very good see i can't tell in 13 year old tree that the tepto that the one rubber cut the tree and left it it is giving about 17 kg uh, hardwood in a single tree so i don't want to tell even every tree at the 13 years will get uh, 17 kg hardwood but in an average of 15 years i can tell without any hesitation so at least 12 kg average each tree i mean average of 12 kg 
in a 15 year old that guarantee i can tell sir but it, it, the it, farmers it, get 10 kg even if he gets 10 kg still it's economically viable what i am saying is a yes. farmer if he is doing i am not against this i am very much for sandalwood yes. should be planted but the farmer should not be uh, misguided that's what i am saying it will be about fine from some papers also in hmm. this regard i will tell you see many of the in the name of iwst many people are doing many business yeah many people are selling sandalwood seedlings many are telling it is marior many are doing many many works on the name in the name of iwst which we are also not aware and many cases will not come to our notice also true true they make their own calculation they tell the name of iwst they make propaganda they sell it it's happening that is different exactly sir yeah. exactly but in That's a few so... cases really limited number of cases you may get 10 kg but normally what i am saying is instead of 15 years if you say 30 year by 30 year you will get good revenue that would be yes, ideal that's what yes, i told sir, we are my own experience yeah, i am have sandalwood tree in my place in I, now i am settled down at yeah, you are very correct and we also like and love to tell farmers that you mm -hmm. keep the trees for more than 20 years minimum more than 20 yeah. years. but what is actually the challenging is when it crosses 8 years when it crosses 8 years already the theft a blade they will put the blade for trees to check whether hardwood is there this problem starts the farmers will get alerted oh, there is been total by the theft the, the thieves so what happens they will be very much afraid to keep further exactly so we still recommend them at least you keep 15 years minimum we keep 15 years that will be a bit viable but uh, if uh, one is getting by 15 years 1.5 crore from an acre, that won't be no, sir, no, sir. an idea. No, sir, that, is, that is a false statement. See, 1.5 crore for okay, acre is okay, okay. clear, sir. Clear. Now I am very clear. Okay. See, my, my economics I showed you, no, sir. I showed you the minimum inputs, minimum security, and minimum uh, output what we can get from acre. For, is 53 lakh rupees. Yeah. I told no, you, I so. have seen, 53 lakh per acre. If you go yeah. for acre, then you may expect some good crossing growth. That is different. But subject okay. to condition, minimum of 10 kg hardwood per tree should be there. Yeah. Then, as you said, that much amount would be obtained. Yes, sir. That's but what normally are giving a realistic uh, picture. Uh, farmers to farmers to telling uh. if it is being taken care, grown up properly, without any damages and without any theft, and at least per hectare, 360 trees are available for him with 10 kg of hardwood per tree that, that condition is worth if he keeps but, more than 15 years then automatically the wood formation and the per tree hardwood will be enhanced but exactly. unfortunately because of his social conditions or economic conditions he will be not be helpful to, or he will not be supported by the environment to keep further yeah because of threat he will be afraid so he feels that exactly. he take it out okay sir. now clear uh, sir one more uh, there is a call uh, from uh, mr murugaselvam he is a real practical uh, sandalwood grower sir mr mr murugaselvam could you talk yes sir i say now say sir i am murugaselvam sir 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 every uh, every everyone sir yeah. i i talk tamil sir I, uh, you are audible, please speak, sir. Sir, uh, sir no everyone telling hard work only. Uh, sir, I am speaking on behalf of Mr. Murugan Salam, sir. Sir, ah, please, sir. speaking about the, just the hard work only, sir is saying that it has medicinal values also and also cosmetic value. Cosmetic values. Mm -hmm. Minimum 100 kg per tree. Sir? No, per tree, minimum 100, 100 kg, sir. Is this is possible. My farm, uh, three years old, now 100 kg. He is saying through the organic farming, he has achieved almost 100 kg uh, per tree. The per tree is waiting 100 kg in three years, actually. Okay. Yeah, how much oil production in wood? Uh, that only value. Hard wood, hard wood only. But other, other plant is not value. He is saying that everyone is speaking only about the hardwood. There are other cosmetic values and medical values, right? like oil values. 
Okay, sir. Uh, okay, sir. I understood your point. What he says, sir, you please see it, sir. In three year old tree, the whole weight may not be even 100 kg. Please check it, sir. Um, sir the actually, three... average, average, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I am now, as of, as of now, I am selling 100 kg. Anyway, after 10 years, every, every tree minimum 100 kg. Uh, okay, baby, baby. okay, sir. Okay, okay. But uh, what? You know, you know, insp you know that uh, trees. You, you, you are an uh, inspection officer. Uh, you, you, that, that everyone that inspect that to our farm. Uh, okay. we, we are achieving minimum 50 kg uh, third year. What's to come? What's to the cosmetic? You calculate to cosmetic rate minimum 80 lakhs per uh, per acre. Uh, okay, sir. Actually, sir, now the problem is, sir, you are estimated by the whole weight of the tree, but we yes. don't know how much hardwood will be there. And why, you are why high, hardwood, hardwood. Other, other, other wood did not use. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Our argument is that even uh, other than hardwood also, the sapwood is also sapwood is also a valuable part of the wood. So that also fetch income, okay, like that he's telling. And uh, I think sir can you tell sir, me average income. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sir, you can you can you can give the address of your uh, farm in the uh, chat box. So those yes. who interested uh, can visit your farm. I got a chance to visit one time and it is uh, maintained organically without any chemical fertilizer, nicely maintained. So kindly uh, anybody like to uh, visit our field, he will be helping everybody to visit. Kindly have a look. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there is any more questions, please reserve your question till my final talk. And there is a separate uh, half an hour was uh, allotted only for interactions. <laughs> so I will go for my presentation. Um, sir, uh, this is very important. Sometimes uh, you may uh, feel that I am disagreeing with the earlier speakers. Kindly, kindly um, take care of my presentation, sir. And I will be, I can answer all your queries related to health of the tree, health of the tree. And I have strong faith that if something is healthy, then the product will be nice. And if some unhealthy, the production will be, uh, will be nice. So this is my main concept, good uh, silvicultural practices for the best health of sandalwood. Now you see some of the abiotic factors. Abiotic factors, these are the water logging, as, as somebody earlier said. Uh, these are the incidences where farmers came across or the depth of the trees. This is one place, one place where water in a stony areas get logged during rainy season. There is a depth of the trees. Kindly take care that there won't be any water stagnation in your plantation. Now, why this water stagnation? Water stagnation promote the infection of one fungus causing the root color. Can you see the root color in a, the, this, the, um, 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 this um, image? The neck region or the soil color region, the um, canker like this form, and that kill the trees. That's what we don't want, we, we take care that there won't be uh, water stagnation in your sandalwood plantations. Now you see, these are the, some of the incidents of, um, uh, of uh, farmers face the death of the trees only because of excess rain and the water stagnation. Now you see fire, fire, very dangerous, very dangerous. See, some farmer said, why the tree died? See, if you see the left side, somebody heaped the, uh, the dry powder and they burned it. So automatically, sorry, automatically the plant dried off. Now you see, I don't know, uh, this image, why they put fire near the sandal tree? How much human beings are sensitive to a tree? I don't know. You see, it, it looks like it is not a natural uh, sandalwood tree. It too looks like it is a planted tree and they put a fire on the tree, fire near the tree and they expect the sandalwood to remain as such a sandalwood tree. No. They die. They respond very poorly for the fire. 
Now this summer, sometime hailstorm, hailstorm it is not in our hand, natural, sometime naturally a stony rain or a stony snow falls, this type of symptoms causes. Now you see how, how the living, sandal is also living, you see how if a beads cover the whole sandal wood, it is unable to breathe out, so its face, here you see. The sandal is inside, its growth is totally retarded and the right side you see, the climber made how much is this? almost like a strangulated, tightened in a symbol uh, climber. Now you see, these are the response to the climber and sometimes fencing also. We won't bother. We won't bother that uh, tree is living thing. Any type of scratch or crack or cut. And some of the silviculture practices are against the health of the tree. They, they don't mind to wound the tree. They, won't, they can do anything. So this type of concept has come to, to this, affect the health of the trees. Now, uh, there is, uh, I thought to skip this thing, but yesterday there is a message you should uh, talk something about the pest also. There are some insects, okay, insects are there, but compared to human beings, insect won't do much damage to the sun. That my, my long experience, I can tell, we are the first culprit to spoil the health of the sandalwood tree. Please see it. Uh, this is sometimes will come, and if you are not using much insecticides, then it has its own natural enemies like a spider, they will keep the, this type of insects under control. And uh, very rarely, this is basically neem pest where neem is grown very close to sandalwood uh, and this also sometimes may kill the tree if it is regularly attacking for 2-3 years. And now, sometimes it comes in mainly in the summer season, season uh, and attack the, almost all parts of the plants. Uh, this also mainly come in summer time, Ferris Evergata. Now you see, you, you see why these insects are very little bit dangerous because they drain the sap, they drain the sap and make the plant with the uh, This is also a study of somebody sent it. Uh, this is drain in the sap of the leaves, but many, um, see the tender growing shoots gets a I mean dried up. These are the symptoms of sap drainage. Can you see one insect how much, how much uh, sap it is drained by the plant and excrete it out? It's all by single insect, you see. So, I think there may, generally this, uh, whatever the um, effect of this scale inside, generally the a single branch may dry up and generally the whole plant won't die and the plants recover in a, rise, a nice way. You kindly see this, these are all the plants recovering from the uh, sap drainage. And uh, only thing is, uh, as uh, in earlier, uh, one, um, uh, one of the speaker told the pongami is a good ghost, but pongami is a good ghost, but they don't grow very near the sandalwood because there will be a lot of insect pest which is attacking both sandal and pongamia. Kindly avoid not to grow pongamia pineta with the sandalwood. So most of the problem of this scale insects or succum pest will come down. And um, uh, see here also we say pruning, pruning only in the dried branches, don't, don't cutting a living branches, okay. So we got to monitor regularly, why we got to monitor regularly, once the insect become hard and mature, it is very difficult to control and there are, even if the early stage if you spray any neem based products are good enough to control and don't use any, see we keep in mind that this is a very uh, 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 high medicinal plant of high medicinal value, we should not use very strong in insecticides unless there is a emergency. And because there are many natural enemies which will take uh, control of these insects. And this all will come, don't afraid, they will come eat one leaf, two leaves and three leaves. Many farmers eat, eat, take the photograph of the, these insects and to me or what to be sprayed. Don't bother, they, they won't do much harm to the, your sandal. Uh, these are also some other things, they eat the leaves. Rarely, rarely, this recent days, one of the uh, plantations, these insects uh, had um, uh, um, uh, a walk in the sense that uh, because of the water stagnation, kindly see that uh, by insects effect alone, the chances of a tree dying is very, very, very rare. But if that plant is having some other stress, 
water stagnation or anything that time the effect of the insects can be uh, lethal also Uh, this type of beavils comes when you grow sandalwood in the areas where cottons are grown because these are major pests of cotton. They like to eat from, uh, sift from cotton to sandal. So in these areas, uh, we should be very careful. And sometimes in Karnataka, I could not see this problem any place other than Karnataka. This is molluscar little problem. They eat the leaves. And uh, here you see these are very good insects. You don't mistake us. We should know what are useful insects, what are useless insects. These are very useful insects. They won't do any harm. They are totally non-vegetarian insects. They eat the other, other insects. So what I want to tell you, wherever you feel there, be, there may be some defoliator, apply a neem cake at the time of planting or some there are systemic pesticides, uh, granules are coming, applying. Otherwise, when you uh, uh, even foliar spray of neem based products are recommended to complete uh, to avoid defoliation. Now come to termites. Please don't bother termites. Termites are very useful. I can show this in this photo I got taken around 10 years back. Now the tree has grown very nicely as a big tree. They actually they will enrich the plant with more nutrients and enrich the soil with more water because it makes the water, uh, yeah, soil more aeration. Unless you wound a tree, if there is a wound made by you, otherwise they eat only the dried bark. It won't do any harm to the plant. But one option is, suppose before you planting, if you see uh, this type of big, big termatorium, you can eradicate the termatorium because every population will be, optimum population will be good for the land or anything. So this type of termatorium before you, uh, when you do soil preparation, you can eradicate. Then borer, there are some few borers are coming, particularly in the early stage, they may do some more harm, like uh, polyphago, zero coffee, interpila, coordinateta. These are things generally little bit lethal in the one to two year. After that, they can't do much of effect. Because if you see, wherever this borer has come, the trees are intact. It is our fourth or fifth year. They do little bit of harm and go. And only in the first year. And this in, in this insect is very interesting. You see, the, it attacks very younger, uh, younger shoots, very early stage. And they eat and come out, go to little bigger branch. Uh, then you come out and go to a bigger branch. So one option is wherever you see this problem, in this stage, this stage, if you spray neem seed oil or neem seed kernel extract is sufficient to kill this insect. So, uh, as I said, only the first year of plantation, if the tree is attacked by this borer, the tree dies. Otherwise, after sec second or third year, it can't kill the tree, though it eats a little bit uh, uh, sap food. Now, uh, why we can go see? This, tree, this insect can be easily maintained by light trap and maintaining the field because the moth, if you remove the unnecessary weeds in your area and the application, there is very nice products are available and um, easily can be maintained if you are not wounding the tree. Now you see why I am against for this pruning or wounding the tree and I tell the farmer before wounding a tree you just to wound your body. How, what is the effect of wounding your body? then you decide whether you do pruning or not. See, wherever farmers do pruning, there is a significant increase in the uh, borer damage. Kindly see, the all borer make the advantage of uh, you, our wound, what we make the wound on a tree. Kindly see, wherever they do pruning, 3.87 percentage incidence of this insect and there is no pruning point eight nine percentage. Any, you take any borer, the incidence will be more if you do pruning because pruning makes the plant vulnerable to other insects and they can bore the tree easily. So we are making a way for the entry of the borers. And this insect also, where the wood like this, so we get more projection. If the wood is lost like this way, we won't get anything. These are all uh, due to, mainly due to pruning and subsequently the insect goes. Now you see, Wound, see, wound is wound for you and the tree also. Can you see, an insect make use of the wounds caused by us to lay the eggs and the, from that egg hatches. Can you see, they also like the wound uh, to lay the eggs. Also, we are supporting the insect to lay more eggs on sandal. 
in the process of uh, pruning. Now you see how a leaf feeding insects also take shelter inside the wound which we create on a tree. And you see the mollusks also uh, during daytime they hide inside the wound. So these wounds are created by us, not by the tree. Now you see a small wound in a tree, young tree, some six year old tree. What are, who are the people living in that uh, small wound kindly see? There are so many insects and one spider also ended to feed on them. Since there is no pesticide application, the spider thought that why I will go and eat them like that it has come. You see the cut wound is a wound for anybody, for you and tree, same, please see it. And how the insects make use of this wound. Now this, why this pruning, suppose hey, when hey, we are not going to tie the sheep and goat in near under the tree, so please don't do pruning. So when you do this type of activities, you have to do pruning. And you see, these are the wound induced cavities in a tree, wound induced in a cavities in a tree. Kindly see. And this is, you are doing for, it is not for the beneath the tree, you want to park a tree, park a car, everything, you are uh, pruning or wounding. And you see, I could see a neem tree, how you respond for a wound, you see. This extreme case of that neem tree itself dies. And this is a reaction to kill the wood, you see. And you see the tree try to heal the wound. But you see, this type of cavities are created in the process. By mechanical, it becomes pipe like that. Nothing is inside, even in a neem tree. Now this... People, no, 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 nobody bother whether they are living things. Nail the tree like anything, put in the fire near the tree. Ah, here you are doing pruning. Here you are doing pruning for uh, landscape or uh, the hotel, cat and this, uh, for uh, making the climate to grow. But this, uh, finally the tree gets this type of symptoms. Silver oak tree, you see. It's a teak tree, I don't know, farmers are advised to prune like anything. Tree loses its strength, everything, the early stage itself. You see, kindly see the status of tree trees without a bone. And many farm, many things, they are dying, the trees are dying, you see, fungus, anybody can enter, when you, when you wounded, anybody can enter inside and spoil the hardwood. Because water, the chemical which you apply is only to uh, waste our uh, paisa as well as spoil our earth. No chemical is going to work against uh, fungus or insects. Now you see some other places we have to do pruning like here. Mulberry, we do pruning only to get more leaves, the two tender leaves. But if you are not, uh, uh, for leaves we are pruning. But if, if a tree get a chance to grow without pruning, that grows a big tree without any wound. Like that early days you would have seen uh, mango trees. Nowadays we can see this type of mango only. But the early days we used to get bigger, bigger trees. Because we won't do pruning. The tree has grown naturally. Now this is Moringa. Very rarely see. People used to think that Moringa won't go straight. Yes. If you are not wounded in a Moringa tree, it will grow straight only. So this Marayor... Uh, Marayor, I don't know, nobody pruned the tree grows straight. Sandal also, always it is tend to grow straight only. These are the occasions I have seen. Straight growth of sandal wood without pruning. This is Marayor. Largest trees in Marayor, I can see. Marayor. How the tree is grown straight without pruning. Now you see early stage itself, the tree tends to grow, our sandal, these are all sandal example. But when you do pruning, kindly see, this tree is pruned, I think, uh, without any, <laughs> see the tree lost the balance and they give support. Once you uh, break the backboard, then give a support, then the termite will come. Now you just to see how the trees are spoiled, spoiled in the name of pruning. Generally, termite eat only the dried bark. In the wooded part, the dried branch also the tree, the termite try to eat. You see, these are all effect of pruning. 
the down root that make the tree as a umbrella when the wind comes it breaks. Now you see this image please see when an insect eat a single leaf people go to shop buy chemical and apply. Same man this is a human being activity. He wounded the tree like anything removing all the, tree, all the leaves. In the sense that the only he cut the branches only it will go straight. Totally nonsense activity. In the process, he only not wasting his uh, paisa, he is wasting the soil health, health of the tree and the production also. Productivity of the sandalwood also. Now these are the some of the effects, some of the field we can't enter it. That section the trees are tortured. You see, a tree should grow like this way. Kindly tell, a tree should grow like this way. If, if a human beings, all the, both the arms are cut the way the trees are growing. You see, this is a three year old tree. Even if it 30 years, what you will get it? What you are going to get it from this tree? What is science of pruning? Science of pruning is nothing but science of torturing. Science of cruel. See, man is very kind, generous. First you break that balance backbone, then come with a stick to support. I think this is in where we can give justification by this type of science. See how, how the trees are. Uh, now you see, this left side tree, you see, please see. One farmer asked me, what is the insect problem? So insects won't do this type of activity. Then we found that this tree is pruned in such a way that when wind comes, it bend beyond its capacity. It is bending beyond its capacity, the cracks are coming. And this fellow, he pruned and then he realized that sir, what he has done is mistake. These are all effects only due to pruning. See, now, now science of pruning says you wound it and apply chemical. Nonsense. Please don't apply any chemical because if you apply chemical, you are, your paisa is getting wasted and your earth is getting spoiled. All the earthworms get killed. Please don't do that mistake. See, how people, trees are get killed. Finally, see. We, we, we thought farmers are growing trees, but uh, farmers really want to grow tree. But the science of pruning, from many scientists who want to do, who advocate pruning, the trees are dying. Trees are dying. You see, you see this right side man told that he is not getting sleep because his uh, trees are dying. I don't know. Now you can tell who killed the tree. He himself killed the tree. Now we see one uh, farmer field in Tamil Nadu, I think uh, nine, uh, nine years. So somebody asked what age is, it is also indication that hardwood how has come in the ninth year. Please see, it is a ninth year old tree. The trees are died only due to pruning. Kindly note that the trees died only due to pruning. The scientists who recommend the pruning are missing nowadays. So these are the some of the um, effect of the pruning and the trees try to come up. See, because of pruning the tree started dying, then again maybe some little bit of overall environment. So now these trees, even if you put 30 years, 100 years, what, what growth you are going to get it? No, this is another rainy season if you do pruning these things. 
this farmer also telephoned that uh, water is coming from my tree, sir. <laughs> then I told the whole world is fighting, even Karnataka Tamil Nadu is fighting for water. If a tree gets water, good enough. So the problem is he pruned the trees in the rainy season. So hollowness, fungal decay ended and the, the tree become hollowness and the water comes out. It is too, I mean, six year old. Simoga. I visited this field. He said, my father is maybe going for depression. Kindly come and see. Um, this also, you see, these are things. Wherever you do pruning, the stem also breaks, cracks, premature cracking. These are all the typical examples of uh, my, my, even Marayur also, mechanical damage by animals or other way. And uh, heart would last, and this type of heart would you will be getting in a wounded or prone tree. You see, very as early. So this tree already started getting heart root in, in the side branches. People are cut and thrown. Now you see, number. this is uh, Kerala is one example. You see, even this wound created only for numbering the tree. This is uh, made for removing the bar to number the tree because as Andal is one of the valuable tree species. Because of this simple removal of the bark, Led to greater loss of heart rate. Can you see? Then nowadays, that's what the fire department realized that the way they did the numbering is not correct. Now they are going for this ring and plate method of numbering. But our fire minister has still wounded the tree. So finally, this is happening. This is the some of the example of harvested woods in Mario. Then one more assumption, uh, many, some of the scientists are promoting that uh, side branches won't give heart root. Uh, please don't believe that. Trees uh, developing heart root not for you or me, it is for its own strength. Each and every branch develop heart root. This is an example. And you see in Marayur, uh, many mature trees are harvested, every branch will have heart root. That's what they take, given up to one centimeter, one inch diameter uh, or girth trees, I mean branches are uh, collected and they process them and even they get the heart root from these small small branches. So you see pencil like branch um, heart root in small branches. Now one assumption is people there are some uh, scientists claim that when you do pruning only uh, girth grows. No. Oh. I can challenge anybody if you do pruning or the girth will come down. This is one example in the same field. It is around the one and a half year old, I think. Around um, one and a half year old tree. Wherever they pruned along with the mulberry. See, mulberry they got to prune for leaves. But the same way they pruned all the sandalwood trees. 9.03 centimeter and they missed one or two trees. They said go for 15.24 centimeter. This is also uh, in my own canvas. These both trees are of same age. Here I pruned severely. Other tree I did not prune. Kindly see the difference. Here, this one farmer field. Ayo. So he pruned the trees like anything. I don't know. Since the tree is very close to cassia, he did not prune. Around five times bigger than these trees. This I already showed. Uh, now you see, after having this effect, I advised my campus people also don't do pruning. Now that the tree has become a little bit stabilized and it is growing very nicely. And if you see, in 2016, the wound created is today also wood. It became bigger wood. Can you see? Same tree, the wound uh, is the, the 2016, even today it is a wound only. Can you see?
No, as I said, the tree, every tree do self pruning. They know when the my lower branches to be dried and set up. That knows. Kindly do, don't do any wound from our end. Then uh, I think why other aspect. There are many useful organisms are there to uh, survey on these small small side branches. Like you can these spiders, very beautiful creatures. If you are sandal plant, is now with this type of creatures, you have no need to use any chemicals. They are totally carnivorous or non-vegetarian. They eat only on the small small insects, and uh, these are also all these are insects. If you are not spraying, if you are not pruning, they come and visit, enjoy their life there, and eat small small insects and keep them under control. You have no need to use any. These are all very beautiful beautiful insects, and by the by the operation of your pruning, you are eliminating their survival. Okay, they need a little bit of bushy, little bit of shade environment to survive. That we are spoiling them. Their life, their their residential uh, environment, so they can't survive there. So your pest population will increases. These are the predators, coccinelle predators. In some of these predators are uh, laboratory raid and multiplied and uh, field released for biological control programs. They eat these small small insects like anything, which is no pesticide can control. Like you see. This type of mealybug also they can eat, and you can see the spiders very ferocious to eat on these mealybugs. And finally, parasites. There are um, un invisible parasites also. Uh, many insects are affecting, and we don't use this type of pesticides or pruning. And you see, people say honeybee. You where honeybee like to live? You see, kindly see where honeybee like to live. It is a nat naturally. You see the here, natural. Sorry. You see where any bee like to live. Interestingly, they also need little bit shady environment so that the the main stem is protected by the side branches. It grows straight, and the honey bee also enjoy life. Support pollination. Here you see how oh, the trees are. Now what you will get from this tree? You are not telling any useful insects, useful creatures. Now you see. And you see, this fellow after pruning he has given support both iron bar, iron rod, iron rod, which is commonly used for centering purpose. How much great generosity! First to break the backbone. And bring the iron rod and support. I don't know what type of science, what type of human uh, mentality. And he also one or two trees he did not prune it. There the tree see the health of the leaves. Kindly see the health of the leaves. Kindly see the health of the leaves. How much you see? It like a banana leaf size. There. It's the same field pruned and no prune. So here they see they applied the borax paste, thinking that borax paste will control, like people that uh, hydrochloroquine and remdesivir will control by corona. No, mere waste. It will spy, it will waste our paisa as well as the uh, earth health, soil health, and then it will come to our plate only, because whatever we throw in the environment, it will come back to us. And the another yes, our research says. What of the chemical which you are using for wound healing in a tree is mere waste? It is not my statement. So kindly don't think that by wounding a tree and uh, uh, then subsequent application you can uh, you can um, you can protect the tree. That is not possible. Okay, so now there is one person. Uh, advice, uh, sorry, immediately you please clean the hole and spray manacorodas with the spring and close with wax. What is a science? I don't know. When a tree want to grow healthy, people make it wound and there is an advice from somebody. He is advising. Immediately you please clean the hole and spray manacorodas with the spring and close with the wax. How many days you will spray man manacorodas? And how many days manacorodas will be effective? All nonsense activities. Because you put India over pressure, toxicity. 
even countries like Nepal is saying no to the vegetables produced in, that, in our country with the pesticide. No, I don't know if chemicals are applied strongly on the sandal, which country is going to take your sandalwood oil, I don't know. No, there is a publication that wherever wounded trees, the quality of the oils also go down. Not only the quantity of the oil, quality of the oil also goes down in a wounded or pruned tree. So, um, I do not take much time. Health is wealth. The preservation of health is easier than the cure of disease. So, any more details, you can contact me. And one more thing I want to announce you. This uh, next month, April 27, 28 to 29. Kindly note, April 27, 28, 29, we are conducting physical mode of training. There you will get a different feeling of <laughs> real training. Those farmers who, who, who are like, who are interested to attend this physical mode of training, can contact me in this number. I will give the details. There is some payment details are there also because it is, we have to give boarding and lodging also. So there is some payment is there. Kindly, if some farmer is really interested, um, they are um, welcome to join the our physical mode of training. Um, with this note, uh, I think now our um, formal technical sessions are all getting over. If there is any question pertain to this talk, as well as our earlier uh, talk also, you are welcome to ask. Any clarifications, any doubts, uh, we are happy to answer you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ask our people also. Any questions or any clarification, please, sir? Hello. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, I have one question that uh, when we extract uh, some sample from the sandalwood tree for its testing, can you please tell us how to fill that, uh, that hole afterwards? Uh, madam, uh, um, if you ask me, as I am a tree health specialist, or my motto is love the tree, grow wood. If you want to uh, allow the wood to grow, first you should love the tree. Okay. Um, I, I am not recommending any farmer to go and see how much hot wood has come, hot wood has come, hot wood has come. Please don't do it. But you should know the economics. When you decide to sell your tree, that time, please do it. Otherwise, even you fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, if you see hot wood is not coming, are you going to remove the tree? So kindly don't do this type of thing. See, I want to tell you in a family, first child will be a girl, second child will be a uh, boy, third child will be a transgender. So some of the things are not in our hand. If a tree destined to not to uh, develop hot wood, maybe, Fine, not, 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 not one percentage. Even if you do any amount of effort, that tree is not going to develop hard wood. Also, keep in mind the tree develop hard wood not for you or me, for its own strength. This is the this is the cre this is the creation of God. Okay. So I don't recommend that every month or every after sixty or seventy year go and see like that is a robber. Robber is doing the same thing. He put a blade and see whether hard wood has come or not. So that as a owner, please don't do. But when you want to do, okay. As you said, one tree, just for a curiosity, if you want to know whether hot wood has come, there is some procedure as uh, um, Dr. Devar explained, non-destructive method is there. Okay, one tree, you can put a bee wax or something, you cover it. But wound is a wound forever, kindly see. That wound, what you are making whole, it will remain for 100 years also, it is a wound. That nobody can change. I am unable to see any sandalwood tree has the curing 
capacity, healing, wound healing capacity. Some other trees like neem, uh, to some extent the samanya saman, they cover that cut end. But so far in my around 25 years of experience with the sandal, I could not see any cut end is covered by the, uh, uh, by the sandal. Okay, madam? Okay, sir. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Any more clarifications? Otherwise, some of the questions. Uh, any more questions is there, there? Hello, sir. Oh, please, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, in some of the literature, it has been found that using the detergent, uh, like uh, this laundry detergent, it has been used to control the mealybug or the scale insects in some of the plants. So my question is, can we use it on sandalwood also? or using it for the long term, can it affect the hardwood formation or oil quality? Madam, my simple uh, request to all the farmers, first, if you are not wounding or pruning the tree, the scale insects and mealybugs won't be issue. You see, don't bother about one scale insects or one mealybugs come into your field and rainy little sap. Okay, because it has its own natural enemies, it will get killed. Okay. But if don't do any detergents or anything. Now, very nice neem based products are available. If you feel that there is a need for some control, kindly go with the neem, neem based products. Now, lot of formula neem based, neem gold, neem arc, fortune asa, or simply your neem seed oil, it will be good. Okay. So, I want to re reiterate one more stand that single inside can't kill a tree. With our additional uh, pruning or pruning can kill, can, can lead to a death of a tree. Except the one borer, borer damage in the first year, little bit harmful. That is, or it may be lethal also. Otherwise, kindly don't to spray detergents like agricultural crop, you know, once in 15 days. I got, uh, I heard that uh, one farmer was telling, one district horticulture officer went to sandal field and suggested to spray chloroparibas every month. What is this, madam? What right they have to recommend chloroparibas to a sandalwood tree regular, regularly every month? It is not your agricultural crops. And sandal is the prime number one uh, medicinal plant. So natural way we can grow very nicely without using any strong pesticides. Provided you don't wound or prune the tree, madam. Please don't wound the prune tree. And if somebody is particular to wound or prune, please make some wound in your body and see what is the effect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Huh? Any more question, please? Hello. Uh, please, sir. Uh, sir, here, Rajni Kumar, sir. Uh, that sandalwood pruning is mandatory required or not, sir? I See, that's what, as a health expert, I'm telling you, don't touch the plant with a knife. Okay. See, the thing is, sir, I want to tell you, uh, this Rebidranath Tahur, you made me know, you know, our Nobel laureate. Uh, he has described a tree as the, as the earth's endless effort to speak to the listening heaven. He described a tree as earth's endless effect to, uh, effort to speak to the listening heaven. That means everybody, he himself knows that tree will grow straight only. Trees will grow straight only, that is proved beyond doubt, but till by chance if its growing tip is damaged, main growing tip is damaged, the tree get confused and it gets side branches more, okay? Even then, if you leave it without any disturbance, one side branch or one lateral branch will take a lead to grow, okay? So don't do pruning and don't do apply any chemical after pruning, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
there is one question from Dr. Ian Saktivel, uh, Central Silk Board, uh, Aiswal Mizoram to everyone. Is there any package of practices for cultivation of and maintenance of sandalwood trees as border crop and uh, agricultural land? Actually, if you, if you answer this question very correctly, we are only learning from the farmer. What are the ways we are, uh, farmers are uh, growing sandalwood? I can tell one thing, uh, sandalwood can be grown at any way as a border plant, block plantation like earlier Dr. Dore was speaking. But the only thing is, uh, this depends upon area, locality, package. And so far, we did not make any definite package. This is the way we got to grow. This is the way should not grow. So it varies from Kanyamari to Kashmir and um, uh, Northeast and our East, uh, uh, Western part of India. So it is a uh, area specific package to be followed. So as such, we don't have any um, uh, very strict package for growing sandalwood this way, that way. Okay, it is very highly flexible. Highly flexible depends upon the need of the farmer. Depends upon the local tree species, local host or fruit species, it is can be grown. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your answer, sir. For this, uh, I have seen a uh, lot of farmers growing uh, tea good, yes, uh, border uh, crop around mm. the agriculture land in many places. Uh, there is mm. my doubt arises, then is it possible to grow uh, uh, sandalwood around the uh, uh, agriculture land as a border crop? Uh, under irrigated as well as uh, rain fed condition. This is my question, sir. Thank you for your answer. It can, actually, it, is, it can be grown because see, if you see the natural uh, sandal growing areas, um, the bats used to take the, I mean, feed, um, eat the fruit and they put near the uh, fence area and they will let the tree, uh, sandalwood grows along with other border trees very nicely. So, people are growing in border, as a border tree, also sandalwood, it grows nicely, but the only thing is, like, no, a sir, is, there, is there any recommendation of spacing uh, to grow as a border crop, spacing between the trees? As such, there is no definite spacing, that's what I'm telling, there is no definite spacing, okay. but uh, uh -huh. depends upon the canopy of the tree, the sandal, even three into three feet, that uh, what, three meter, what Dure said, that level it goes. But uh, in some plantation, I have seen the bats, because the bats, whole border was with the tree, sandal only, without even half feet, one feet spacing. Whole uh, border was made by, I mean, natural way, I am telling natural um, regeneration, border is made. So ideal spacing, we can go for three into three uh, meter spacing for border. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your reply, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh... Sir, may I add some more point with the border planting? Hello? Ah, please add. So, regarding this rice field, you just, uh, you can plant no issue with along the border. Only thing that uh, water should not affect water style. In the rice will be used to maintain the water continuously. So, the root of the sand should not be affected by the water level. That has to be taken care in such a way that uh, the sandal plant has to be above the bundle. Are you getting my point? Hello? Yes, so yes. That, yes. Has, uh, that has to be maintained. Sometimes what you will know, even the boundary uh, bund is there, bund is very one or two feet high. So at that stage, what you will know, the sandal root goes and enter in the water level. So once it's entered the water level, the stagnated water level, there is a chance to get what uh, growth will be retarded. So sandal need that dry, well drained uh, condition. Otherwise, your bund is sufficient height and it, it is have much problem with water moisture. So there is no issue, you can go in. And also you can take care that the, uh, the Along the border, that bun should not be very loose soil, like sandy soil. If it is loose, now the plant cannot be able to hold the soil properly. There is a chance to windfall. So this this is the two issue. Otherwise, the bun planting no issue. We take care of these two things. And regarding spacing, uh, eight to ten feet is sufficient because normally the sandal crown not more than three meter at any case. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
హలో సార్ ఐ ఎమ్ రాజశేఖర్ సార్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ సార్ సార్ యూ టోల్డ్ ట్రీస్ షుడ్ నాట్ బి ప్రౌండ్ కటింగ్ షుడ్ నాట్ బి బ్రాంచెస్ దిస్ విల్ బి అప్లికేబుల్ టు ఆల్ ప్లాంట్స్ ఈవెన్ మ్యాంగో ఆర్ క్యాషియో ఆర్ సపోటా ఆర్ ఆల్ ది ప్లాంట్స్ సార్ సార్ మై ప్రజెంటేషన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ క్లియర్ ఓకే సార్ like mm. malberry malberry you have to do pruning regularly so that you will correct. get more tender leaves correct ah correct correct sir if, if you are not pruning it to grow like a big tree you can't climb and correct. get leaves clear correct can correct, you sir. see for our benefit or get more leaves you can do pruning in malberry okay yes yes number 2 come to mango mango mm. earlier days people used to climb the mango tree to get to one fruit today correct anybody is there to climb a tree to get to one mango fruit because no sir we are not allowing any mango tree to grow beyond our height okay mm. we want to mm. keep the mango tree under our height so that we can pluck them directly clear yes yes sir so in the process can you get any mango tree living for 1000 years no no you are tree mango tree we may for 15 or 20 years life is gone correct ah yes what, what yes, is that because you you are wounding you are pruning regularly that yes. makes the plant reduces its life okay correct. so correct. here i can't say don't do pruning because we need to get more more mango fruits in the accessible yes. height so mulberry we got to prune but where mm. i what i want to say if you want to get a wood from a tree kindly see if uh, you want uh, to get a wood from a tree uh, don't touch the plant with the tree with a wound, um, knife like a teak tree good, you go and see any teak tree lives happily no <laughs> oh people are do improving like anything leaving on the top and they are bending like a, a old man yes bow what is the science what is the science i am unable to understand sir but i am sincerely uh, uh, my folded hand i am telling you all sorry sir <laughs> if you want to get a wood from a tree kindly yes. don't wound the tree don't okay correct sir correct sir sir one more one more thing sir uh. sir uh, how to avoid a theft of the sandalwood uh, plants theft sir ah yes sir sir that Even is even in front of house also so people uh, are coming and uh, night cutting and <laughs> taking sir, sir it's a big issue so only sir awareness sir you see uh, many many cities having gold uh, shops they are very intact how they are protected na sir uh, millions of yes. gold is protected very nicely yeah. and even some yes. theft to yes. uh, theft happen within 24 hours 48 hours people are caught correct right, sir so some yes, sir. for the society some awareness for mm-hmm. the for the moment all we can take see will awareness will be there sir okay then it all can yes, be sir. under control moreover now science technologies are also growing in sir some chips are getting developed and they are under trial so that also will uh, come to protect our sandalwood tree also sir thank you sir what will be cost of the chips sir hello the, the, sir the chips are now in the trial and uh, trial stage so once the mass production comes i think that uh, mm-hmm. if the rate will come down sir now the cost little bit costly but once the uh, methodology uh, standardized product standardized when you to go for mass production naturally it will the rate will come down sir okay that means still in the uh, under process yes sir yes sir yes sir. it may take another one or two years sir uh, maximum two years sir two years sir. okay because due to theft only we are unable to plant the sandalwood sir otherwise we are having a land but we are unable to Uh, plant it yes sir because of this only many farmers are not getting confidence yes, to grow tree not getting confidence to grow sir. you are correct sir thank you sir yes sir thank you sir thank you very much sir sir any more doubt clarification please sir we have some 5 7 minutes more
Uh, sir, Rajni Kumar here, sir. Uh, sir, in between, a farmer can expect any income from sandalwood, uh, this uh, seed, sir? Sir, uh, the science is, uh, we got to think a little bit logical way, sir. Okay. Uh, you may not like my answer, but I, I want to tell the fact. Okay, sir. Now, you see, uh, I saw some farmer cutting the side branches of uh, sandal and feeding the goats also. Okay. But my, I, I, my, my, if you ask my view, for feeding a sheep, there are so many other alternatives are there. You can grow Suspania. There are so many plants are there if you want to grow the goat. But uh, like that, see, you see, um, neem, you come to our neem. The neem is one of the tree to solve global problem or so many good effects are there. But even today, sir, if you see, the, the, the usage potential of neem seed is only 30%, sir. That means... The amount, the quantum of the seed produced by neem, only 30% of seed is processed, utilized for its biophysical property, medicinal property, and so many other ways also. Only 70% of the seeds or fruits produced by neem is going as a manure or as a natural phenomena of uh, recycling. Okay. Now you see, sir, like that if you see sandal, sandal is for hardwood and sapwood. Okay, sir. There, if somebody says you collect the seed and okay, germination, seedling rice, that is one thing. But getting seed oil and it is getting more economically is a little bit of doubt, sir. I have little bit doubt. But maybe for particular medicinal use, it can be used. Otherwise, um, economically, viability of making sandalwood oil will be a, um, a little difficult, sir. I mean, seed oil, sandal seed oil is a little bit difficult, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Seeds also be eaten by some bats. They also have to survive, in us, sir. Ah, uh, sir. Sir. But one thing I can tell, sir, logically, if you are taking care of the health of the tree, the revenue and the income, there won't be any uh, undoubtable income you will get. Even 12 kg of hardwood per 15-year-old tree is good enough to get very good income. That I can uh, guarantee, sir. Uh, sir, thank you. Sir, I am Janardhanan. Previously, I ta had a talk. Yes, now, yes, told, yes, told you a kilogram of hardwood is uh, uh, you are assuring. But I am saying that to a farmer, this is not the right answer. 12 kilogram under ideal condition for a particular tree, you may get provided you give all sort of support. For a farmer, this is not possible. That's what I learned. Sir, From my own experience, I am sir, saying it will be less than 5 kg. Even 5 kg, you won't get a farmer. Kindly, I, I, can't again, I am saying thanks from my own experience. Sir, sir you, you, you can tell where you are experience. You come to our fields, our, uh, our campus, sir. We, have, we can show 9-year-old tree, 10-year-old tree with little care how much hard to take there, number one. Uh, otherwise, I will give the contact number of one person in uh, Coimbatore. You go and visit his field. And he sir, has... shall I say, to a farmer, is it possible if he is doing uh, in large area? Yes, in sir. one or two days, it will be all no, right. No. He is having about seven, seven acre of trees, seven acre plants. He, uh, uh, he has plants. You go and see, sir. I will give the contact number, sir. Don't worry. Kindly, now, please, please, sir. I will be, I will be very much interested. The thing is, I am very bold. That I am very sure that it won't be there. It won't be there. Yes, Less than is. five kg from fifteen year old. So, yes, so yeah. many research papers are there. One you robber. See, Sorry. See, so many, see, this uh, Manual of Economically Important Forest Species in South India, Institute of Forest Genetics and Tree Breeding, like that, so many research papers are there. What they say, from 15 years onwards, as a rule of thumb, each tree adds one kilogram of hardwood to its weight each year after the age of 15 years. This is, see, I, I had very good interaction with the Vengadeshan, KR Vengadeshan, sir. He mm. visited our place a number of times during 80s. 
see from the research from your institution it was sandalwood research center bangalore they sir, themselves sir, had sir, given sir, lots sir. of number of research papers sir, but sir, i don't know why how uh, the quantum quantity of heart to this more you are saying nowadays this sir, the, the, sir. Sir, the effect that is, is a farmer will be thinking he will be getting like crores of rupees that's why i commented we have to plant of course not of sir sir you are you are your apprehension is that time all with the natural plantations okay sir all the data generated by vengadeshan sir srimadi sir srimadi madam are all related to natural plantations now you the you if you go even some other images i showed sixth year sixth year very good heart wood formation and you see that one tamil nadu farmer i said ninth year because of pruni he harvested the tree i showed the things so now sir the because of the plantation people used to take little care every year they are giving some 5 kg gobra and some uh, barmi compost there are some plantation they are giving this jiva uh, mirtham every month even some farmers are giving once in uh, two times in a month so this type of things happening sir so there is a heart wood formation at early stage and quantum also more so i am sure for 15 year 12 because after seeing this uh, what that tannir pandal in year uh, tannir pandal in coimbatore he he kept one uh, rubber cut tree intact okay i will give, i will share his contact number you can talk to him sir you can go visit his field also okay sir whether iwsk has given any research paper on this saying that uh, they will get more than by 15 year the, the you will get this much quantity i think dr divagar ma published one or two paper that uh, economics uh, dr divagar presented na he published one or two paper you can uh, contact him sir you will give you okay. share okay yeah okay. sir good evening sir good evening sir uh, in telangana uh, i have a two farmers number sir Mm. and they are extracted sandalwood plants in the age of uh, 15 years mm. he got around one plant around 7 to 8 kg and a few plants he got 12 kg and 15 kg hardwood mm. his name is mallik arjun sir i can share his number also uh, uh, if jenardan sir hello uh, uh, you can uh, please 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 you can visit siddhi peta sir siddhi peta district in telangana mm. Uh, he is having hardwood sir he is ready to sell then uh, please visit that case also sir i can give two farmers number please uh, uh, yeah as far even uh, my knowledge and based upon uh, soil condition and environmental condition hardwood formation starts okay uh, 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 even we ha- okay dr reddy you make use sir, of sir. this uh, make use of this uh, very good opportunity to you can visit that at the time of harvesting you measure at least some hundred trees huh? uh, yes sir yes get the quantum of the hardwood and get some good publication also okay yes sir yes sir even case we sell uh, mr uma shankar also i spoke to him sir uh-huh. is this two farmers they are ready to sell this uh, sandal uh, the hardwood okay okay nice uh-huh. and uh, they have measured uh, he got a very good uh, very good hardwood even i asked him when he have done plantation and he is given bold answer uh, then he has showed that uh, when he is done that uh, date also the telangana agriculture people provided that saplings in the year of uh, maybe 2001 i am not exactly i am not sure about that uh, but he said only uh, 15 and 16 years old only sir okay okay nice i will talk to him sir once again i will talk to him once again i'll give full clarity sir even even i can share uh, the two, two farmers numbers also okay nice thank you thank you uh, any other clarification uh, sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you any other clarification or um, question sir Mr. Pangaj Pangaj Arora is there, sir. You are not not a question. How are you? You 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 have to unmute you. We are not audible. Please unmute you. You are mute. Unmute you. Hello, ah. sir. Ah, please. Ah. Hey, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, how are you, sir? 
am tk sir any question related to your uh, this sandalwood farming uh, sir main actually question karna cha raha tha ki mere mere ko legal help ya isme kahan se mil sakti hai ki kya government ke rule hain iske according kyunki hum hum logo ki side mein farmers ko main basically ye problem hai wo sochte hain ki abhi bhi illegal hai sandalwood farming sir uh, uh, uh. oh that uh, little bit the, uh, related to legal issues sir um, actually uh, coincidentally no concerned person is available here uh, because this is restricted to only growing sandalwood um, but the, if you get a chance to attend our um, uh, physical method of training we will keep a class on that sir and okay, uh, okay sir thanks for recognizing me sir okay thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. hello hello sir good afternoon sir uh, good afternoon sir uh, janardhan sir can i have your mobile number sir i can i can provide their numbers to you sir kindly 8547 okay sir thank i can provide the two farmer numbers also sir thank please thank please you. you can visit sir okay. thank, thank thank you sir thank you. Th thank you sir doc any more uh, clarification sir okay uh, if there is no more uh, questions we will uh, sir janathan uh, janathan sir yeah, yeah please can you give your comments for this training so that um, we can um, based on your comments there is a possibility for us to improve our next uh, um, uh, <laughs> no 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 it is uh, it, it was really wonderful to hear all those things but my uh, suggestion of course what we need is uh, to plant more and more sandalwood there is no doubt for that sir the thing is if uh, a farmer is uh, given uh, any uh, i mean a promise that by 15 years you will get this much amount mm -hmm. uh, that will adversely affect it. that's all Uh, I, but uh, we are compelled to say you are compelled to say like that many a times what is happening in kerala condition uh, of course in marayur it is coming up like anything as i told i am having 7 years of experience in marayur sandalwood area mm. and i had very good exposure uh, during the 80s vengadeshan sir uh, shrimati madam and all those things. i know all of them but the thing is if uh, people farmers they are thinking that by 15 year i will get this much crores of rupees that will be a, uh, that won't be a very good uh, indication as you told if a few trees are in your campus if you are giving lot of attention and all it is good but they should be given an idea that they will get very good uh, revenue but not this much that that's the only point what i told i am not against planting i am very much interested in sandalwood planting and all it must be done in my own home when if when i am talking i can see the one what uh, planted about 15 years back and how uh, neatly we are looking after but uh, what is the size what is the quantum available even marayur also and i was uh, in social for uh, for about 6 years i was in social for reductions in many parts of kerala it was done anyway anyway the meeting was good but uh, uh, i told uh, uh, what is in my mind so thank you so, so, so nice of you sir so nice of you actually sir uh, in my experience also when i met so many like tanir pandal koyambattur one pudukote one farmer they are having about 13 15 year old trees but nobody has take, uh, grown only for, for the purpose of sandalwood okay like in our few, in my our campus also i planted some trees and i forgotten but near that the tree is i used to put tulasi or some medicinal plant so i used to take care of this medicinal plants so in the process the trees gets enjoy life okay exact mm -hmm. we did not give any i did not give any attention specifically for sandalwood okay this okay this thing this this is the common thing which i younger with other farmer also now but now who are taken plantation mainly with the focus of only sandalwood that means 
nowadays who take sandalwood plantation the prime crop is sandalwood and the other intermediate or um, um, other crops are like a intermediate return okay so in that sense sir with my few uh, experience with uh, extracted wood as well as uh, pepped cut wood um, 12 kg of wood may not be um, um, surprised we can get it that is the only thing sir so now you can also have some practical uh, contact with the contact practical with the... knowledge only sir i told with my own practical knowledge yes, sir practical contact with the concerned farmer and you also get the feeling okay sir okay okay thank you sir thank, thank you. you so if there is no more hello, questions sir, I just... sir. Ah, please hello sir i can add few more points with regard to our uh, janardan sir so already there is a report the australian people they have done lot of work and they generally r2 has found uh, from 6th year and 2 7th year there is a uh, chinese people they said they are reported 6th year they got r2 whereas in our uh, src that the sandal research time that our srimadi group they found in tanjavur 8 uh, year old plantation they have the very good r2 so however that uh, economically uh, viable rotation period is uh, according to australian people 25 to 30 years that is a uh, viable uh, harvesting period but the minimum harvesting age uh, the ksdl suggested it is a 15 years so even you can harvest early stage you are, that you have to wait it is like a incremental growth the rot wood will start and it has to be every year will be adding on just like a interest so you keep on more uh, time you will get more yield and uh, another thing the international market sandal is uh, trade in the uh, alpha beta content If it is more alpha beta sandal oil content, you will get good price. So with increasing age, that alpha beta content will be increasing. So that is why we have to wait more time. We will get more uh, price. So there is according to the scientific that Australia have done uh, there. They give it conservative years. Twenty-five to thirty years is normal. Yeah. This is the just Sir, I was. Uh, only oh, oh, I am concluding this. Sir, exactly. I got an opportunity from Kerala Forest Department. I was sent to Australia to study the sandalwood there, and um, as rightly told now, that's what I too told. It may take thirty to forty forty years. Then it will be worth. If fifteen years, from my own experience and Australian experience, I so far what I could learn. I was there for two weeks and visited lot many areas. and uh, if it is kept for 30 40 years of course no doubt it will be worth 15 years this much quantum of amount to a farmer i do have a doubt thank you very much sir okay thank you sir any more uh, doubt or clarification hello sir ah uh, please uh, sir any offline training will be conducted in your center sir sir i already told na april uh, 27 28 29 uh, we are conducting offline training on sandalwood farming and management of health for 3 days uh, details for registration uh, you know my email id or phone number na tell, tell me sir phone number 9740 9740 4370 Five nine. Five nine. Okay, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I am also waiting from long time, sir. Ah. The the training required, please, sir. Maybe very quickly attend. Can I want to, sir? Please. April twenty twenty. We accept less than one month, sir. Please join. You you got the you got the registration details. Uh, sir, uh, I I think I I have or uh, otherwise I will uh, get the. Um... I will uh, I will send you. I think you are contacted with me. I'll send you. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, if there is no more uh, clarifications or questions. Uh, i think now we can close the our program um, by sincerely thanking all of you all my uh, very good participants uh, i am very happy most of the participants interacted with uh, us nicely and um, 
I am thank you all for your patient hearing and uh, interaction. Uh, I think uh, it will help our country to reach the goal of greening India as well as uh, regain the glory, past glory of sandalwood. As um, Ms. Nalini in the introduction times, he told India was contributing 85% of world trade in sandalwood, but now it is nowhere. So all of you are there with more enthusiasm to grow sandalwood, to grow sandalwood, to grow sandalwood, and uh, we can achieve our goal. So with this, I am thanking each and every participant for your patient hearing and the participation. Thank you. I thank my uh, resource persons, Dr. N. Ravi, Dr. M. Durai, Dr. B. N. Dhuwagar, for uh, delivering their address, even with a short notice, within two days only, before only be informed, and they are answered uh, uh, nicely. Uh, Manakar, you give me my email ID for physical mode of training. R. Sudharaja I am sharing my email ID. Uh, so that uh, anybody want to contact for physical method of training, R Sundara Raj, R S U D A R A R A R A J. At I say for it that way. That way. Yes, yes. So I am sharing my uh, organizational email ID. I say for email. Um, those who interest interest to attend the physical method of training can contact me. I'll send the uh, registration details. Um, with this, I thank my uh, additional staff. Mr. Rajari is he's always with me for organizing, Alani for comparing, and all other staff uh, for supporting it. And your are going to Chris, uh, he's a, uh, he came um, in, I mean, um, by I don't see, um, knowing this uh, advertisement or news, he came directly to attend the training. So, we thank you also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We meet once a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.